can you unmute up? Okay. This is Auto Beatty. Um, we are ready to go. Yep, we got you, Otto. Okay. Thank can you, you um, uh, can you hear me, um, uh, Lewis? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I can. Yes. Okay, so I'm on. And Otto, welcome. I'm glad you're here with us today. Well, thanks. I think you and I are, you and I are seem to be the uh, the slow ones on this technology stuff here. So. <laughs> well, <there's been> a, <laughs> and then there's been a few other things going on in town. Well, no, we've... I un I understand that. I understand. Okay, Lewis, are you ready? Yeah, I think I'm. Can you mute uh, order? Brian Kinselman. Oh, he appears to be you know, Okay, go ahead, Steve. Let's call the meeting to order. <clears throat> um, we'll say the first order of business is to swear in the uh, staff who are joining us today. Could you just run down the list and mention your names, and then we'll swear you in as a group. Lewis, start with you. Yeah, Lewis Taba, uh, Planner Two, Planner for the Downtown Commission. Okay. Christopher Lord, Planning Manager. Anyone else from the city? You okay. raise your right. Would you raise your right hands and? Uh, uh, do you swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Okay, next order of business. Why don't we just, so we know everybody that's here, let's just run down the list of commissioners that are present. I'm here, Steve Whitman. I see. Otto Beatty. I'm here. Mike Lusk. Tony Slanick. Danny Palmore. Gina Bonacci. Ted Hardesty. Okay, very good. Who else? Are we missing anybody? Lewis, just make note of it if someone didn't. Uh, or they might be on mute. So if you notice somebody that wasn't called, we'll, for attendance purposes, we'll do that. Um, does that mean, Lewis, that we have a, um, how many did we have? Do we have a quorum? Uh, we have a quorum, yes. Okay, a quorum is declared. Um, next, um, let's um, go to the um, uh, review of the uh, record of um, uh, the last hearing um, slash minutes, okay? Um, is there an order? Is there a... Um, a motion to approve the um, staff report from the last meeting, the record of action. Could I have a motion to approve that? Motion to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. Thank you. Any questions, corrections, additions, deletions? If you come up with something later, feel free to call Lewis. We can amend something. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have approved the uh, record of action for the May 26th meeting. Let's just go right on to the first case then. Lewis, I will turn that over to you, please. Okay. First case is 123 East Spring Street, um, application DC 2003016. So the location in the city. where we are next to North Third East Spring. And I did a site visit. So you're familiar with this uh, this location from last month. Uh, here we have the exterior. Here you can see they have Roman brick on this on the bottom of the structure. Norman brick on top. They do have this conduit. Uh, I wanted to point that out. That that might want to be a condition that the conduit go away. It might be going away anyway. Here are the windows. West elevation. Your parking lot to the east of the structure. Rear. See the condition there. This 
is the East Passa. Admir. All right. Okay, I will remind everybody that we have uh, seen this case. We spent time with this last month, and we um, we kind of generally, I won't use the word approved it, but we suggested that the application would work with certain um, uh, requires, requirements and conditions. Um, can somebody bring us up to date on where we are regarding some of those items, please? Lewis, is that yours or do you want to, do we want I to hear can, from that? I can go real quick. Um, okay, go ahead. So as you can see, the applicant appeared, like you said, at May 26. Uh, we asked that they have specifications on the awning, window specifications, lighting specifications, paint color for the IFIS. Uh, we said the north wall should be painted with German schmear, and the south and the west wall be painted. So they modified the submission based on this information. And uh, we say it generally meets the guidelines with regards to ground floor uses and storefronts and historic resources. So here's their submission. And then I. I believe Eric is present. Correct. Hi, Eric. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we this can. The, Thank you. This is the applicant. Eric Batter. Uh, so tell me, what is the color then on the IFAS that you're proposing? We are proposing a. Um, uh, it is a Benjamin Moore rock gray. It's a. Pretty dark gray. Um, I don't know if I should pull it up and share. Okay, and the it'll be uh, a dark gray so that the uh, because of the cranking and just kind of flashes. And the schmear will be basically a white, off white over the red brick, so that some of the red brick and rubbed on, so some of the red brick will show. Is that correct? Correct. It's also to, uh, to help kind of. The, the lines from all the brick infill because of the Roman brick, modular brick. Gotcha. How about the conduit on the front? Does that go away? Yes, we'll we'll remove that because we are going to put in these uh, barn style welds in the front. Okay, and then you got us the details on the awnings, and that's what you're proposing to put up then, right? And you've got us lighting details. Uh, yeah, so a lighting yes. spec, gotcha. yeah. Any questions from any of the commissioners on this? Um, I just have one question for Eric when we were uh, talking about the German schmear. The color that actually goes on initially, does it stay that way or over time does it begin to fade to look even more natural? Uh, that's a good question because most of the time uh, it should be a very long term uh, application that should be about a 10 year warranty, but I can't stay for sure and depending on the contractor because there are different methods on installing it, um, but it, it will eventually have somewhere down the line. Uh, it's kind of an aged so. weathered brick look kind of thing. Is that Correct. the Yeah. OK. okay. Any yeah, other it's kind of. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? I just wanted to clarify that the east facade and the north facade, they will also have the German they, those will have the German schmear. Correct. Both sides that have the brick will be will receive the German schmear, and then both sides that contain the IFIS will be uh, repaired, and then all of the IFIS will be painted so that it doesn't look, doesn't look like it's kind of patchy. Okay. Thank you. I really like how you articulated the um, the awning in segments. I think it looks yes. um, very, very well with the design. Yeah, it looked a lot better than the last time when it was all one, for sure. Uh-huh. Thank you. Okay, are there other the, questions uh, comments? Does, yeah, does the wall graphic turn into an on-premise sign, or is it staying as a advertising? The uh, large billboard? The large okay. billboard that's kind of right there in the bottom right there, that's maintained uh, uh, by the landlord. So that is on the... Um, I recall the east facade on the west facade where is the IFS there on the elevation above. This will be a future uh, graphic that that Freedom All Car would like to propose. That's going to be a separate uh, review uh, down the line once they have that graphic. I'm, I'm sorry, where is that for the other graphic? The, that one will be uh, right there where the mouse cursor is. That'll be down, a future proposal 
that will come to you uh, later when they do uh, propose that. Uh, but for now, the existing billboard will, would remain as the uh, landlords. Uh, and that's on the west west side of the building. Is that correct? I think it's on the west and brick on the east. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? What's the pleasure of the group, please? Do we need to take action on this, Steve? Didn't we vote for it last time? Um, yes, I think we did, but I just maybe to clarify it. This is something that had a bunch of different changes, which is why they're back here now. Okay. So I move I approval maybe, as it's been resubmitted. And I, I second that. Good. I, I think that's good. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in Aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries then. Thank you, Lewis. Can I jump in real quick? This is Wendy. Sorry, just wanted to make sure that the applicants get sworn. Oh, I beg your pardon. Eric, would you raise your right hand, please? Yes. All right, make sure you get to see it. You swear uh, you. that the uh, testimony you are about to give uh, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If so, say I do. I do. That means you got to move that conduit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that on the drawing. So I already noted down. Wendy's, or Wendy's coming after you. Okay. Next case, please. All right. Next case is DC 205002 West Nationwide Boulevard. Um, we all know where this is, but just for the public, uh, New Crew Stadium. Here. And uh, so the applicant is returning to the commission uh, for approval of, of exterior graphics master plan. The proposal includes a mix of sponsorship, team branding, and wayfinding signage. There will be two large rooftop signs, a number of wall signs, pylon signs, and ground signs. The applicant does not have detailed drawings of the signage, but requests the commission approve the size, placement, and type of signage conditioned on subsequent staff approval of detailed drawings. The guideline states that new signage should be designed to be logical and complementary component of the overall design of a building and not be cluttered. Uh, this is a stadium, so a large amount of signage is probably expected. Uh, the proposal generally meets the guidelines with regards to graphics. Okay, um, very good. Uh, who, um, speaking for the applicants, in, please. Would anyone who wishes to um, speak, uh, please step up and I'm going to have you raise your right hand, please. Is Jeff Panganis here. Yep, I'm here. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Steve Lyons is also here. Anybody else from the applicants? Steve and Jeff, would you raise your right hands? You swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If so, say I do. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go ahead, Lewis. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, this is Steve Lyons. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the chief business officer for the Columbus crew, and I want to offer a, uh, on behalf of myself, all of us the crew, Haslam Sports Group, and our local ownership in, in D and Jimmy Haslam, along with the Edwards family, I want to thank the commission uh, for not only your time today for being, but also for being such great partners of ours throughout the entirety of this, this project. The last time I was, I was with the commission was September of 2019. And we had the opportunity to present to you what at that time was, um, a number of renderings, which, uh, as great as those renderings were at that moment in time, it's amazing how fast this project has progressed from hosting a historic groundbreaking in October to this past May, uh, putting the first steel beam uh, of the stadium into the ground, while at the same time being able to honor our frontline heroes uh, in the process, to what is uh, now um, the upper bowl of the south end of the stadium coming out of the ground uh, into what, um, what gives people an opportunity to see what the stadium will look like. Um, we're proud that we're on, uh, on time uh, for our July 2021 uh, opening date next season. Uh, and we're also proud that we've been able to 
uh, ensure the health and safety of all of our workers uh, throughout the entirety of this process. So we take the excitement of the stadium coupled with Major League Soccer's announcement of return to play. Uh, our team will depart this Sunday for Orlando. Uh, so we're excited about getting back to the business of soccer and um, you know, even more excited about uh, continuing to push forward on the stadium project and what this means for uh, the future of our city. So this is the last time we plan uh, to uh, come before the commission related to the new stadium. But I just wanted to um, reinforce our appreciation and thanks to the commission for your ongoing consideration of our requests. Um, and just to repeat, requesting a certificate of appropriateness for two items. One is the stadium graphics and wayfinding master plan and two, the stadium plaza board and the accompanying request for a council variance in support of the video board. So with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Jeff. Thanks, Steve. Um, thank you, Commissioner Whitman. Um, uh, so again, I just want to reiterate what we're here for today. The first package is um, our signage and wayfinding master plan. What we're requesting of you specifically is that uh, against this master plan, staff may approve um, signage that aligns with the intent of this document. So um, I know typically um, this might be a little out of um, order in terms of how you typically do business, but um, given the fact that this is one of three professional sports teams in the city uh, along Nationwide Boulevard, um, uh, we thought we would uh, propose uh, this solution. So uh, Lewis, maybe you could click through to the next slide. So um, what you're looking at is a master plan of the entire stadium site. And I just want to catch everyone up. It has not substantially changed since you first approved it. Um, and we are making great progress, as Steve said. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so everyone's familiar with these images. This is the um, quality of signage, the type of signage that you'll see um on the stadium so what we're what we're specifically showing here is sponsorship signage and stadium signage um, uh, in this sort of same type family installation fabrication etc uh, that we imagine on the soccer stadium next slide please and with that same level of quality intent a few images of the arena district um, just to say just to point out that what we uh, intend to do on uh, Crew Stadium uh, will complement um, and follow in line with what's in the Arena District today. Next slide, please. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the cadence of, of, of the show here today. So um, we have a lot of slides, but they're going to be clicked through, and I won't need to narrate through each of them. Um, they may uh, look a little overwhelming. So what I'm going to do here is show you an overall image. Um, of a specific, uh, against a specific idea. And then the next slide is going to illustrate the detail here. So again, what we're asking for is that you all uh, consider approval of, of the sign uh, locations and sizes that we're illustrating, and then that staff may approve their ultimate uh, and final design as they emerge one at a time. So uh, Lewis, next slide, please. So again, same image, and now I'm illustrating the detail, the size, uh, and what that signage might be. So we're talking about title sponsors, uh, the roof line sponsor, which you also have on Clipper Stadium, Huntington Park, et cetera. So now, when you say exact size and placement to be determined, I mean, how big a hole are you leaving? I mean, can it be the entire width of that wall there? What you've got in there proportionally, obviously, I think for my taste looks good and it's very reasonable, four foot six inch letters, but but TBD is, you know, how wide open do we go? Yeah, great question, Steve. So um, uh, the, the, the imagery that you're seeing on the top of the stadium on the roof line is the only one that we're sort of holding as a TBD, um, but what we're assuming what we're proposing to you is that we would fall in, in line in proportion with this. 
if we come back with something that is substantially different in any way, we recognize that we'll have to come back for a full visit. Okay. Right. And that'll go for any signage that deviates too much. I'll bring them back to the commission for approval. Yep. See you, Lewis. So it's all uh, still going back through Lewis. So if we have a, a, a way to catch anything that we might not like. Okay. Great. Thank I'm you. Sorry, Jeff. Keep going. Thanks, uh, Commissioner. Okay, Lewis, we can uh, maybe continue here at kind of a, you know, a slow pace here. So now, uh, Commissioners, you're looking um, at the plaza, the main entry, looking northwest into the stadium. Next site. So again, this is a bit overwhelming. Um, <laughs> we're trying to provide uh, you with the detail uh, that you might want or that Lewis might want as he's deciding whether or not um, any of these are staff approvable as they come at you. So uh, again, just a few signs here to point out. Next slide will show you all the detail. This is a bit redundant, same place. So we're leaving room for plaza sponsors, for team branding, things like store signage. So the kind of signage, again, that we're talking about here is um, stadium and team, uh, sponsorship, wayfinding directional, and the kind of functional signage that you would imagine on a building like this. I have a question about the actual lettering of the signs. Yeah. Are you, in terms of say of the sponsor stadium sign or other signage that has to do with um, sponsorship, are you thinking that whatever that corporate font and logo are, that is what the sign would become? Or are you picking a font and a style that is going to coordinate for the stadium and that would pretty much um, dictate what, you know, what that lettering looks like? For, for signage? Good, good question, Commissioner. So what you'll likely find is that the directional wayfinding and functional signage will be of a common typeface, right? So, um, you know, uh, things pointing to doors, entries, functional things will be of a common typeface and a common uh, graphic package. Sponsorships and other things will likely take the form of their brand font. Okay. Okay, Lewis, I think you can continue here. We've spent quite a bit of time in this uh, plaza. Yep. So now we're wrapping around. This is Nationwide Boulevard. Commission is one of the really exciting pieces that I we brought to you last uh, time around was uh, this sort of uh, terrace that overlooks Nationwide Boulevard. And that's what you're looking at now. Can you talk a little bit about that 160 foot long uh, graphic? Sure. Um, it's uh, you. I think everyone understands here. We're being a little bit vague because these things are evolving as sponsors emerge and a branding story emerges. And so the, that big long team branding thing um, that might say um, uh, some message about the crew. It might be a, a wildly graphic thing. It might be something that changes out routinely. So we're just leaving a little space there um, for something like a wall mural uh, to exist. I kind of think we ought to see that. That's huge. And it's, uh, yeah, you know, see. if you go back one slide, Lewis, um, it, it looks like it's a, a, a graphic that, you know, that supports the architecture. But if that turns into a beer ad, uh, I think that'd be a bit much. Yeah, so uh, good, good question. Um, we're calling that um, a team branding. Um, we're, we're, we're labeling it as an artist commission piece right now. Um, but I do understand that it is a large piece. So, uh, you know, it's, it's and we, um, if, we, if there's a motion, to if there's a motion to support your application, and we call that a team branding um, location for signage. Yes. As opposed to, for example, an off off premises ad. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's that's how it's labeled. And if we if we would uh, make any adjustment to that intent, we recognize that we would be coming back to you for that request. And I would From our standpoint, I think that's helpful. I would be reviewing for that as well. I'll make sure that what was a team brand would be a team brand. What was a title sponsor would have to be a title sponsor. What was art would have to be art. 
I'd just feel more comfortable if we could see that one. Okay. Understood. Well, we're going to ask for a motion in a few minutes here, Bob. You can yeah. throw that in if you want to. Go ahead, Jeff. So fantastic. This is our southwest entry. This will be sort of our secondary entry, if you will. Um, but still lots of great opportunity for fan interaction here in a really wonderful corner of the building. As we wrap around here, there's a little bit of wayfinding, title sponsorship, team branding, etc. Uh, <clears throat> now we're wrapping up Columbus Crew Way and you're seeing uh, the premium lobby entry with some um, um, pretty minimal signage and a little uh, team branding opportunity there uh, adjacent to that entry piece. We're sort of moving north. Now this is our northwest um, entry. Uh, you might consider this the supporters entry um, and uh, kind of our final corner here, if you will. Where you have the circular um, graphic on the pavement, is that intended to be something changeable and um, Temporary, or is that something that is built into the into the pavement and permanent? Sure. Thanks, Commissioner. Yeah, we likely uh, see that as something that is applied to the pavement, um, almost sort of activation, if you will, and likely uh, changeable. If if it were to be uh, a formal installation, we would consider that a material that we would bring back to you um, for approval. As a, as a permanent installation, if that makes sense. And for the wayfinding, do you have anything that um, applies to parking? You know, I understand that if I understand this correctly, the parking is not very close to the stadium, but, um, and you're using parking, you know, you're using existing parking garages, but I'm wondering if there's anything that can direct people to that so that they understand this is this is the way you know, the direction to the parking? Uh, good question. I think on our uh, primary wayfinding, which we'll click through at the end here, there may be a note that just illustrates um, where the proximate parking is located. Of course, you got to figure that if they went to the stadium they and they parked, they, you know, all they do is turn around and go back. Okay. I, I meant when they were looking, when they arrived at the stadium, if they were looking to see where do I go for parking, you know, is there any signage that directs me? So I was wondering about that, but maybe that's not necessary. I don't know if there's any at the ballpark, at the baseball park. Yeah, and this is Phil Dangerfield with the Columbus crew. I, I would just note we'll have our own around parking and overall mobile. So I think the primary emphasis for this wayfinding with Brown for pedestrian traffic around. Okay, very good. Right. Why don't you Thank keep you. going? Uh, all right, Lewis, let's let me keep going. So this is our uh, northeast corner of the stadium, uh, hopefully with a little bit of visibility to the adjacent highway, um, but just a small piece on the corner here. And then uh, this is our, our, um, our wayfinding. There'll be, I believe, three of these components located around the site, one at each entry, and really are directional and meant to uh, uh, direct our fans into the uh, entries of the stadium. So as you approach any one of those three corners, uh, you'll find one of these um, pylons uh, with a little bit of directional um, information on it. So here are the three locations, uh, southeast, uh, as you approach the plaza. Next will be southwest. Yep, thank you. Finally, at the northwest corner. That concludes the presentation for today. Welcome your thoughts and comments, commissioners. Any questions? Go, go okay. forward. Um, Mike Lusk, are you still muted? Can you say something? Yes, I'm still muted. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we have you, Mike. Yeah. Okay. We hear you. Yeah, you're good. All right, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. I'm sorry. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? Any comments? 
My comment is to remind everybody uh, that when we first started the arena district, we tried to figure out how to put in the approval for signage that we wanted it to be chaotic. I think that I think this one meets that criteria. <laughs> and, but, I and think, I, but I think it's very, very well done. So oh, I, mean, I agree. I I, 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 I I love the design of the of the structure too. Yes, I mean, it just makes a statement. And you're right, it's got some uh, energy to it, Bob, I agree. Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of the signage master plan uh, as presented with staff approval of all of the signs, except any that exceed 100 feet in length. And those signs should come back to the commission so we can take a look. Is that a, does that work for you, Jeff and Steve? Yeah, I'll, yes. Steve, you can jump in here, but I, I suggest that would work for us. Yeah, I agree. It does. We we meet every month. Is there a second, please? I'll second that. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? I just had one quick comment. Um, I'm not quite sure what the material is for these for the large signs, but I'm wondering, especially the ones that are very long, maybe something that is a little bit more substantial uh, would be good. I, like, I'm not quite sure if this is something that is um, some type of material that's applied or if it is some type of a hard, harder board, but I'm just wondering when they're very long, you know, maybe if there is some, a little more structure to it, it would be a little more durable and um, hold up better. Yeah, if I could address that, Commissioner, thank you. I think what you'll find, um, by and large, all the signs that we're proposing today are are, are constructed with metal um, and acrylic and very sturdy signage, the same thing that you might see on the nationwide arena. There's not really much applied um, vinyl signage, if you will, or you know, wood painted signage. There's nothing like that. This is um, extremely durable uh, commercial grade signage. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. This is Tony. Uh, over on the Southeast Plaza, there's a sponsor for on-site rocks only. What were you thinking there? Uh, uh, good question, Tony. Uh, Southeast Corner? Southeast Plaza. Southeast Plaza. Lewis, can you click back to one of the early slides? Was that the pavement applied one, Tony? It just says, it says on-site rocks only sponsor. It's in that particular area. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, Tony, if there's some creative sort of activation um, sponsorship that made sense on some of that site furniture, that's what we're thinking, right? So you could imagine uh, an artist painting. Uh, I don't, I'm inventing something now, like a local brewer's um, uh, logo or something on there. So we just want to create a little bit of room for some creative sort of sponsorship and activation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions for the applicant? Any other questions or comments from the audience or the public? Anything from the commissioners? Hearing nothing, all those in favor say aye, please. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, you. Okay. I'm sorry. I hate to be a stickler. This is Wendy again. Sorry, Wendy. I hate to be what a stickler. Yep. I don't think you had a second. Yeah, I actually I did. I had was it a second? Did it? Yeah, I okay. Did. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem at all. Okay. Next case. Uh, one thing when you when you um, when you second, if you could identify yourself. Yes, please. Uh, that's a good idea. That way, sure. Lewis can write it down. Um, By the way, so, so therefore, who did second it? That was Ted. Okay, Ted. Thank you. Okay, the next case, DC 206008, 550 West Nationwide Boulevard, Cruise Stadium as well. Uh, the request is recommendation on a council variance to provide off-premises advertising at Crew Stadium for the public, well, same location, so. Uh, so the applicant is proposing 
Applicant is proposing a use prohibited in the downtown district by section 3359.17B4 of city code and therefore requires a council variance. The downtown commission is being asked to provide a recommendation to the council on the council variance request in the form of a motion to support the requested variance or not support the requested variance. The proposal consists of an outdoor video board, which will include both on-premises and off-premises advertising. As section 3303.02 of city code states, billboard means an off-premises sign, which consists of one or more sign faces, primarily intended by the sign owner to be available for sale, lease, or rental for the purpose of promoting any business or other activity which is not situated on the same property as the billboard or promoting any product or service which is not primarily available on the same property as the billboard and incidentally used for the display of public service messages. Due to the off-premises nature of the advertising being proposed for the video board, it would meet the definition of a billboard. Code section 3359.17B4 further states that billboards are a prohibited use in the downtown district. Therefore, the applicant is seeking a variance of this code section to allow the use. The downtown design guidelines state that special consideration should be given to video screens proposed in the High Street Corridor and the Arena District. The design guidelines support the development of regional facilities, including professional sports downtown. The video screen in question is part of Columbus Crew Stadium, which is unique in being one of three professional sports stadiums in Columbus. Outdoor video screens of this nature are typical of such facilities and function to help enliven the surrounding public spaces. The video screen in question will measure 24 feet wide by 15 feet high and will face a planned public plaza on the southeast corner of the stadium site. Its primary focus will be to provide energy and enliven this public space. The proposal generally meets the guidelines with regards to design principles and electronic displays and video screens. Okay. Who's going to tell us about the case, the applicant? Great. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Um, Let's see, Jeff, you've been sworn in. Same you and Steve. Anybody else? Uh, you've got Philip Dangerfield here with the crew and also Matt Chupac from HNTV. Are you going to, if, would anybody who's going to testify, let's make sure we swear you in? Yeah, Matt, let's. And Matt and I can swear in at this point in time. All right. So Would you um, uh, give, give us your names first and Lewis you can have those? Go ahead. Yes. Philip Dangerfield, uh, Columbus Crew. And Matt Schubach with HNTB. Okay. Philip and Matt, would you raise your right hands? You swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Okay, very good. And uh, obviously, um, Jeff has already been sworn in and Steve. Go ahead, folks. Great, thank you. So, um, Commissioner, two things in front of you here uh, wrapped up in in one idea. So, um, we're here to talk about uh, a video board um, on our plaza. So, we're we're here to ask for two two components. The first is uh, um, a request uh, for a council variance. And the second is uh, architectural approval of that video board. So, Lewis, if we could um, click through, it looks like on my screen you're sort of half in between some slides here. I'll just go to the beginning. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, good. So, um, uh, commissioners, there's a handful of illustrations here, but. Um, you know what, Lewis, let's go to the next one. That's not so easy to understand. That second image is in color and a little, thanks. So Commissioner Slanik had a question about the Southeast Plaza. That's the same uh, location that we're talking about here. So again, our main entry plaza. And just as a reminder, um, this plaza will be public just like this plaza surrounding the nationwide arena. So although uh, in some of the images, you'll see the kind of um, typical um, uh, ticket and, and security gates, those are, are temporary, they're movable. So off game day, this plaza will be accessible. Um, so the point of that is that this video board will be used 
for um, a public event, imagine movie night or, or a concert or some such thing on the plaza. Uh, so, so this uh, uh, video board that we're describing to you today sits 277 feet back from the right of way. That's what you're seeing on the illustration in front of you. So uh, the sort of tan colored is, um, is the plaza and that uh, uh, red line in the back is the location of the video board. Next slide, please. Great, so this is um, uh, kind of a, not a very um, uh, aesthetically uh, exceptional rendering here, but really a functional rendering to show you um, what the scale of that board looks like. So you see the 96 and the, and the black and yet black and gold cruise stripes there. That's the video board uh, from the street. Again, about 275 feet back. And that is the full size of it, right? That's the full size of it. Yeah, we're, we're illustrating it with that crew logo in there just so it sticks out from its uh, surroundings. Okay. okay, so what we're illustrating is about 24 by 15 Size. If I'm not mistaken, I think what's currently at Battelle, Battelle Plaza in the Arena District is 16 by 30. Um, don't quote me on that. I, I'm I'm pretty confident that's right. Next slide. So here's the up close. So again, um, uh, you can imagine there. Uh, per my last uh, presentation, some some signage or sponsorship wrapped around this thing. Uh, but what you see in front of you in uh, in the crew logo and, and uh, branding is the size of that video board. There's a little. Why space. isn't it bigger? Why, why doesn't it fill that space? Uh, Phil, do you, would you like to? Uh, I was going to defer. That? Yeah, I was going to defer to Matt Chupak on how that space, uh, how that size was selected. Yeah, so the, the size for that video board was based on the size of the plaza and uh, the viewing distance for people, like Jeff mentioned, a movie night in the plaza. So based on the dimensions of where people would be seated or hanging out in that plaza, this is about the right size um, for that space and didn't need to be any larger. To the left of the, of the 96 there, you see a kind of a square. It looks like it's... It looks like the whole thing makes a rectangular frame, and then your video screen only fills part of that. And I, I think maybe that's what Bob Lovers is just asking. That, you see what I'm seeing, saying? And, and also to the right, there's a blank space. Is yeah, that just we, part of your design? Yeah, we assume there'll probably be some sponsorship branding, some architectural elements in there. Well, did we approve that though? To the, in our re, just in the last case, then? Yes. Prove putting something in that in that blank square space to the left of 96, right? That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, next slide, Lewis. Jeff, can I just ask? This is Danny. Can I ask you just one quick question? Please. Okay. Um, so basically, what I hear you saying is where the 96 is, that is an opportunity for. Uh, movies or something like that, but on that uh, side where it's blank, even if there's movies, there there would be sponsorship ads on both sides of this, sort of framing that out. Is that what I hear you saying? Yes, but it, it would it would be static, um, not uh, not moving pictures, okay. not video. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, just so you could imagine, um, you know, a sponsorship unchanged. Just there you go. Okay. Here's one example. Oh, this, this is um, purely an example, but that's what that might look like. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I think we need to talk for just a second about content. Um, the way it's presented, it's just basically no restriction whatsoever on content. You can kind of put whatever you can do advertisements. You can put whatever you want up there. Is that correct? And your understanding? That's right. We assume that it's a mix of sponsorship and crew 
um, or event related content. Well, so and so one question is, what, what, what is your plan on that? I mean, how much of it is crew? How much of it is advertising? And the second question is, maybe you want to talk about it. What happens on the 99% of the time when there's not an event going on in the stadium? Bill? Yeah, so we're, we're uh, to be to be quite honest, Steve, we're still developing that plan. Um, it We don't have a percentage of, hey, it'll be sponsorship 75% of the time and, you know, even later <laughs> at the other part of the time, but it will be a mix, obviously, of sponsorship with which is consistent for a use like this, but then also crew messaging, stadium messaging, and public messaging. So, um, but we don't, it's not an exact science right now. So if will I it have sound. Uh, no, it will not have sound coming from it directly. So if I they told us it nationwide. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say, uh, Bob? I, that's what they told us at Nationwide, too, but they, they do have sound. I just wondered. I don't really care. I just, it's an issue, I think. Any any sound coming emitting from the board would be event related. It would be um, on the bus or on match day. What happens if uh, somebody drives by there at uh, two o'clock in the morning or you live in one of the apartments just to the west there and you're. Um, is is this thing going to be flashing ads on there uh, 24 seven and there, there will be rolling advertisements. I, I would say the position of this board, you know, it's 300 feet off yeah. of off of the roadway. It's got a, you know, it's got train tracks to the east of it. Um, the development to the west, you know, we're in partnership with that development and it will be builded from the stadium from that development on the other um, side. Yeah, so we don't see that as much of a concern, Steve, but yes, we, we do see there being, you know, rolling advertisements. Okay. Okay, I think we understand what the request is. Um, are there any other questions or comments for the applicant? I mean, the one thing that gives me a heck of a lot of comfort on the whole thing is, as Philip just said, it's way back from the roadway, so. Yeah. Football length, uh, football field length uh, back almost. Um, good point. So anyway, what's what's the pleasure of the group? <laughs> um, I I like the idea very much, and I really like the fact that it's being used not just for the advertising, but also for events. You know, using that for movies, maybe um, concerts, and you know, sort of almost creating a stage there, and then having that with a plaza in front. So I think that's really a great use of it as well. And I just had two comments. I think I appreciate that you want to have the sponsorship off to the left, but I'm wondering if the screen was slightly larger, both in, you know, in width and height, if maybe it just fills the space a little better, but still provides room for sponsorship. And um, so that's one one comment and i had another one that i can't remember so i apologize okay are there other comments or or questions anything from the audience does anyone want to make a motion please i'll make a motion to uh, yeah, let's recommend to city council that uh what are we doing we're are we recommending that they Consider it. So it would be. We're recommending. We will, we will we're recommend in. either that they approve it, okay, uh, that they approve a variance to allow this billboard slash video screen, or we will make a motion to the effect that we do not. We recommend that they do not approve it. So that's what. Support that's what the requested do. variance or not support the requested variance. So only so that we. Also, support the variance so your and motion is to support the variance with no no uh details no uh, uh restrictions or conditions no that's okay fine and is there a second for that this is bob i second second well you got There's a second to support okay. the variance okay now now any other questions or comments yes yeah, steve can we also um approve a conditional uh, certificate of appropriateness. In other words, uh, go ahead and approve it, 
conditioned upon them receiving the council variance so that they don't have to come back? Yes, I think we can do that. Uh, is that correct, Wendy? She's our, everybody's okay with that? I think we're gonna do it. It doesn't make sense uh, as we uh, discussed in our business meeting for us to uh, approve the, um, uh, support the uh, variance and then say we're not in favor of the, um, Approval. So I, I think that we could do that. If, uh, I can, with the permission of the um, of um, Mike Lusk and the second, can we make that part of your motion then? Yes, we can uh, amend the motion to uh, uh, also include uh, uh, approval of the certificate of appropriateness. Before okay. we do that, the, the next case is the approval of the certificate of appropriateness. So that should just be a different, a separate vote that we do next. Okay, fine. Let's do it. We're gonna we're gonna move back. We're just gonna this is gonna be a yay or nay on whether we support the request for the variance. Okay. Okay. All the now, any questions from anybody on the commission? Hearing none, all of those, anything from the audience, anything from the public, <laughs> applicants, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, those opposed, anybody opposed? Okay, hearing none, that motion has carried. Okay, Lewis, let's go on to the next case and that should be an easy one. This is an easy one, yeah. So application DC 2006-012, signage or graphics, Downtown Commission is being asked to evaluate the Columbus Crew Video Board proposal based off of its design merits and to vote whether or not to issue a COA. Okay. Are there is there are there any questions or comments from either the applicant or any of the commissioners? Um, I had one comment before when we were talking about the variance. We just somebody brought up the fact that there's going to be advertising um, on that on the video board, but there would be some percentage of messaging as well. And I'm wondering, if, and I know that at this time, there's no commitment to what that percentage would be, but could we maybe settle on a minimum required or you know, um, something that there is a commitment to some um, messaging and even though we don't really know to what extent. What is the, uh, go ahead, Bob talking about public service or what yes right so anything that would either be the on-premise or public service so something where it's not continually off-premise advertising the entire time and that it's broken up with either on-premise um, for the crew or some type of public public service or community messaging that's a question for wendy boots wendy are you there Well, let's ask the applicant about their feelings on that as well, if we could. Well, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you can ask the applicant. Thanks, commissioners. Phil, I'll, I'll jump in here and then please um, fill in behind me. But I guess what we would uh, like to ask the commission today is for some flexibility, um, understanding that um, video content is um, reasonably dynamic and uh, uh, this is something that we are currently working on. Um, the, the crew branding and communications uh, group is, 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 is fast at work, working on all things messaging and content related. Um, some of these things are emerging at, at times along the process. And um, I guess what we would hope to do is um, for you all to understand that we're, you know, working in a, uh, a and the more flexibility you can provide us, the better we're positioned to move forward. I would be good with more flexibility. I agree. I think the city's uh, forced us into this horrible definition of a billboard. I don't think we have any control over it. I think it's, uh, uh, it says it's primarily used for selling advertising well and that is one thing that i will point out is that if council approves the variance then they can use it for you know like bob just said primarily used for off-site advertisement 
So, um, you know, you have to be prepared to have it be 100% off-site advertisement all the time. Pleasure of the group. Any other questions or comments from anybody? I move uh, uh, conditional approval of the uh, certificate of appropriateness, um, the condition being uh, receipt of the council variance. 20 seconds. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments? There's a motion on the floor, seconded. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, commissioners. Appreciate your time. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you for being here. Good job. Okay. Next case, please. Okay. Case DC 2005-004. Is that? 517 Park Street North. Here's the location on the map. Um, here's the convention center, Park Street. There's there Park Street and Spruce. And I took some, <coughs> it's still under construction. You can see the, the building right here. This is the building that had the preservation of the uh, structures on the ground floor. So with that, the applicant is proposing a graphics package for the AC Hotel by Marriott. You can see the details of the package here. The property is located within the North Market Historic District, designated for staff approval at the June 11th business meeting of the Historic Resources Commission. So this has already been approved by HRC. The downtown design guidelines state that buildings should not be dominated by graphics. Crowded or cluttered graphic arrangements should be avoided. New signage should be designed to be a logical and complementary component of the overall design of the storefront. The proposal generally meets the guidelines with regards to graphics. Here's their package. With that, I'll turn over to the applicant. And who's going to present for the applicants, please? Are the applicants here? Lewis, do we know if that somebody's here for the applicant? Supposed to be Mickey Wisco. I see him. Yep. I'm not sure oh, if he's, he's probably muted. muted. Yeah, Christopher, can you unmute Mickey? He's a, he should be unmuted. All right, guys. Sorry, I just didn't want to. Can you hear me? Is there anybody yes. else? That Anybody else? I, I need to swear you in, Mickey. Is there anybody else for the applicant? Mickey, would you raise your so. would you raise your right hand and you swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, we have a package here for the AC Hotel, as mentioned. Um, we did go through the Historic Commission. Um, this is a, just a basic site plan calling and identifying the signage that's in the package. Um, uh, as part of the package or the redesign for the Historic Commission, these letters here that you see on the wall were made to be non-illuminated, uh, lit with external lighting. Um, the, uh, the commission allowed the larger hotel sign above, uh, I think there's a regulation in place of 25 square feet and 20 some feet above ground, obviously for a larger hotel, we need the, uh, visibility and presence along the highway corridor. And then they also show the main plaque and a vinyl there. Again, that's another secondary ID, main ID on the sign, side elevation. Uh, then that would be up top there. There's a, a restaurant and bar uh, in the hotel there. So that signage up top for them. Uh, and then again on CL2 is a, a sign made to be non-illuminated lit by exterior gooseneck lighting uh, for the commission. And then there's a blade sign down there as well, the BL1 that you can see, a uh, blade sign for the hotel. So now these are just details of the signage, the following pages. So this is a sign that has uh, 
if you go back to the, the first two, they're a, a sign that's uh, this is the color scheme of ACO Hotel, so it's muted colors. Um, the signs are solid aluminum faces with uh, routed and pushed through uh, acrylic. So the, only the AC Hotels Marriott and the underscore would actually illuminate. What's the color of the backdrop there then, please, Mickey? Um, of the sign itself or the building? Yeah, yeah, no, the, the sign panel. The sign panel is uh, painted aluminum gray. It's in this finish here. Uh, what color, please? I'm sorry? What color is it, please? But oh, that is the color. That is the color that you see. It's a gray, dark gray. Okay, thank yeah, you. It's a dark. It's a dark. It's a dark gray. Sorry. Gotcha. Thank you. Mickey, is there any signage proposed uh, on Park Street uh, at the the storefronts of the you know that are left over from the original building, or in their windows, or anything else to kind of enliven the street mm -hmm. there? There wasn't anything included in my scope. We want to go back to that site plan. We could look specifically at park, but that was going to be the one over the, uh, I believe there's a brick cutout at CO1 there. So it's actually keeps maintains the facade there, but then the vestibule set back. Uh, the, the letters would be mounted AC hotel, AC Columbus uh, above that uh, mounted on that brick wall. That would be addressing the pedestrians, but I don't have anything. And then there's the blade sign on the lower level on the uh, Spur Street. So that would just, that would come back to us if they want to do something on storefronts for right. retail tenants. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Mickey. Let's walk. Let's get on through this. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, yeah, it's 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 um, you know we looked at the main ID signs. There's a, just a little plaque, non-illuminated pack plaque plaque mounted by the door. Excuse me. Um, and then again, the non-illuminated channel letters lit outside by gooseneck by others. Uh, pretty straightforward package here. This is the main sign that's up on the top there for the restaurant. So again, same black uh, color uh, routed and pushed through acrylic faces. This is just some window vinyl uh, near the entrance there, very subtle and clean. And then that's the, the blade, that's a, the blade sign or an interior, I'm sorry, interior wall sign. So this one's actually not visible in the street. This is the blade sign that would hang over the uh, pedestrian corridor there on park. I think this whole package is very tasteful and scale appropriate to the building. Uh, uh, make a motion to approve it. Sure, I'll make a, a motion to approve the sign package. Danny seconds. Yeah, uh, Danny second. You can hear me. Steve breaking up for anybody else. Yeah, whoever's yeah, speaking, I can't, I can't, can't hear. Either. Steve, we couldn't hear you. No. It's better. Steve, you might need to log out and come back in. You're breaking up pretty badly.
still have a quorum. So if we want to continue, if this is the case that um, the commission would like to vote on, we can move forward. Otto, you're our vice chair. Why don't you take over? Okay. There was a motion, correct? Yes. Do we have a sec? Uh, Danny, second. Any co any comment? Hello, can you can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I don't know what happened. I just blanked off for a minute. Um, okay. I, I was just saying that I don't want to rush anybody. Are we comfortable voting on what they presented? I think it looks good. There is a motion on the floor. Okay. Any other questions or comments then? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Uh, very good. Thank, Thank you. you Let's guys. Go ahead and move on. Thank you very much. Move on to the next case. The next case is. 206014 High Water Alley. This is part of the Saito Peninsula Redevelopment Project. You know its location right here near Costa. Uh, I went out and I took some pictures of the location. You're probably familiar with it, but regardless, this is this alley is going to bisect these parking lots that currently exist. Parking lots. There are some mature trees. That they will be going through. That's pretty much it. Okay. So um, uh, the applicant is proposing a 570 linear foot private streetscape in the peninsula development to be named High Water Alley. The project limits span from Capitol Street on the north to Chapel Street on and is subdivided into three development blocks office, hotel, and residential. There's a description there. The guidelines state that downtown built, built environment will continue to be enhanced and energized with improvement in the public realm that promotes quality design and attention to detail at the street level. DPS has stated that the alley meets and exceeds their streetscape standards. The proposal generally meets the guidelines with regards to design principles. Okay, so uh, whoever is going to speak for the applicants. Would you identify yourselves, please, so I can swear you in? Brian Tunzelman. Brian, okay. Anybody else? You, Brian, anybody else? No, sir. You raise your right hand and swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So say I do. I do. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you, folks. Good morning, commissioners and city staff. Uh, Lewis, thanks for driving the machine for me. Uh, Lewis had summed this up very well. This is for the uh, review and approval of a privately funded, a new community authority funded street that is embedded within the development of the side of Peninsula that you all have seen before. Case following will be a review of the parking structure that's part of the development as well. This is specifically for the three block long high water alley. If you'd advance that, Lewis, please. In the context of the entire peninsula, uh, north is to your right, Kosai at the bottom of the image. Those uh, six, uh, those um, Five rectangles outlined in magenta are the first phase development. The Broad Street frontage, Town Street frontage are future phases of the side of Peninsula development. And the street or alley in question is, uh, is enclosed and embedded through the middle of those development parcels. Next slide, please. This again is an enlargement of the uh, Phase one plan, high water alley is the dark gray uh, kit of parts in, in the middle of the site. There's publicly funded, uh, public service and public utilities funded streets uh, of this district. This is the one that is funded by the uh, new community authority. 
I'll go through just for sake of context. Next slide, please. What those streets are. Everything that's outlined in blue is city uh, funded again through public service and public utilities. There has been uh, continual, continues to be continual board uh, through uh, construction documentation and construction of all of those, all of that infrastructure. And as Lewis had suggested, this high water alley is is uh, separated by a dedicated right of way, which is State Street and Rust Street. And the notion is for the composition of the whole to extend from the south side of Chapel to the north side of Capitol. You'll see in, in these renderings to follow that there's a, a fair amount of, of street pavers involved, all of Chapel, all of Chapel, again, publicly funded are uh, horse pavers. There's a combination of horse and normal duty pavers and uh, as file the stormwater management requirements. All four of those intersections uh, are uh, traffic tables by the by, and I'll come to that in a moment in more detail. Next, Lewis, please. As Lewis had suggested, this new hot water alley is, is through the middle of those parking lots just to the uh, to the uh, west of the building fronting on Broad Street. So it is an enclosed encased street that does not reflect itself out to Broad Street or to Town Street. The only through street uh, that has interaction with High Water Alley is State Street, which goes to the west end to East Franklin. Next slide, please. The city's streetscape has uh, a series of materials that are city standards, the unit pavers, these are precast concrete unit pavers, plastic tree grates uh, in the, on the left of the image. The development authority and team has asked and has been granted an enhancement of those materials, a little higher quality paver, uh, steel, cast iron grates versus plastic grates for walkability and uh, we feel safety. And there were no trash receptacles or bike racks in the uh, publicly funded, the city funded streetscape, this being a, a high energy pedestrian uh, intensive, bike intensive district, we feel it's important that we have this uh, accommodation for bikes and for trash. So these are upgrades or enhancements that are being funded over and above the city's investment by the development. Next slide, please. Now some images quickly step through these so you get a feel for the uh, city funded portion. This is Bell Street looking north towards the Veterans Memorial and Museum. This is the office building on the left. Dorian Green is on the right. You can see uh, curbs, planter curbs, street tree plantings, uh, city standard light fixtures, all in black color. We're also preserving the red oak trees that are on the uh, east side of Bell Street, fronting onto Dorian Green. Those trees are about 25 years old, just coming into their own, and we've uh, wanted to preserve those for obvious reasons. Next slide, please. Moving south on Bell Street, this is the this is the plaza of the Dorian Green as it quote unquote crosses Bell Street and engages the hotel site. Uh, it's been our desire to have this specially paved uh, plaza expression for traffic calming. You can see there's drop off zones at the hotel, also drop off for Dorian Green and for the West Coast side entrance by all of the striping that you will see, all the traffic uh, necessities within the paved areas are all in the pavers, not in paint striping. Next slide, please. <coughs> Moving further south, here's a, a, a long view of Bell Street uh, residential on the, uh, on the left side with office in uh, hotel marching down the street. Again, you can see the preserved oak trees on the right of the image and curbside parking on the Dorian Green side. Next, please. 
This again is a, one of the publicly funded streets. This is straight State Street looking east back towards Dorian Green. You can see the stair tower from the uh, subterranean parking garage, which is under Dorian Green. Give you a feel for the architecture, the mass, and also the uh, appointment of the street. This is an example of the curbside paved areas, again, some of which are porous or stormwater management, others are normal duty pavers. Next, please. The alleys would appear to be alleys in their scale of chapel and capital, which are the north and south edges of uh, high water alley are uh, a very narrow right of way, narrow pavement width. These are curb to curb pavers. This is where the bulk of the stormwater management is taking place in the district. This illustrates the we have at those two end and the two uh, internal intersections, four of them total, where the street pavement raises to meet the pedestrian curb height. And again, all of this striping and marking with pavers. Now for High Water Alley, the, the uh, application itself. Again, everything that's outlined in magenta is meant to be the common vision for high water alley. Some is new community authority funded, some is city funded, but all of this has been highly coordinated and the materials are acceptable to the to the city and uh, is again meant to be a three block long plaza more than a street. This is a curbless street uh, in the interior of these these three blocks. This is a highly energized pedestrian way meant to have uh, a lot of uh, daytime and nighttime activity. There's also limited on street parking. We've got four parking spaces per block, 12 total on street parking spaces within my water. Slide, please. Do you assume that people will be driving up and down this um, high water alley then? I mean, yes, Commissioner, it's it's it may be new community authority funded, but it's a fully operational public street. There will be opportunities for these uh, for these developers and these tenants to, uh, with proper um, proper application, to close these streets for Thursday, Friday, Saturday night events, special events. Um, you can see that the development adjacent has got courtyards for outdoor dining and retailing that is meant to in fact spill out onto the streetscape. So this can be a, a very much the way uh, uh, Ludlow Alley may operate in the arena district. It's a street fully capable of moving automobiles and emergency vehicles, but given more over to the pedestrian in terms of its scale and its finish. Does that answer your question, Steve? Well, yeah, I, I guess I'm just wondering, you don't, but it sounds like, in other words, you don't anticipate that people just drive up and down the street. I mean, they might go up there if they're going to go there. Uh, I'm, is that correct? Or, I think I mean, that's right. Uh, it's low it, alley, it doesn't get much traffic, for example. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I suspect this will not either in that it's a street that doesn't go anywhere. It's again, a part of a linear plaza, but it needs to move uh, bicycles, automobiles, emergency vehicles, but there's, it's not a cut through as it were to get from point A to point B. It's, it's an embedded street. So I think by its very nature, it will be very low traffic. Right. Thank you. Next slide, Lewis. Now the, the layers of the street, we've got limited street trees and they're planted in a ran, more random pattern versus the city street, again, to city streets to draw some distinction to this. We're following the, the family of materials of the city streets, but we want this to have a distinct personality to it. The honey locust trees, uh, again, in limited quantity, this is already a very enclosed space with the mass of the architecture. It doesn't need much more shade or uh, character for scale. We've got ground level planters, some of which uh, are also wood seeking uh, resting elements. These are 
simple ground covers at the base of the trees. We have some areas where we lack the uh, capacity for planters, so we're using these uh, tree grates as previously shown. Next slide, please. And then the other accordements, those rolled curb concrete planters for the, uh, the street trees. Uh, flush curb conditions, so we have these low granite bollards to connote the difference between the driving lane and the uh, on-street pedestrian way. Many of you may be familiar with such devices in uh, Grandview Yard, Neal Avenue on the uh, west side of the OSU Library on OSU's campus, uh, and um, on Bridge Street. These are devices we use quite often. And then the cast iron grate, uh, again, for areas where we have pedestrian access. <clears throat> we've used the city standard uh, uh, pavers, though we've upgraded those. We've also distinguished modestly differently the roadway with a 4x8 paver and a herringbone pattern and a 4x12 paver in the pedestrian areas, just to slightly connote the difference between a vehicular way and a pedestrian way. The precedent image on the lower right gives you that sense of pretty subtle pavement change. Again, all of the striping, uh, pavement markings, crosswalks will be done with pavers, not with paint striping. This image, I'm sorry, Lois, if you would go back, please. This image in the middle showing the pattern. Uh, this is one of the corners of the raised intersections. The dark gray band is a detectable warning. Uh, again, the crosswalks are paver insets. The shark's teeth to connote the uh, the transition from uh, up to the traffic table, and and then we've got a slight change of pavement texture outboard of the warning on those transition areas. Thank you, please. One there we go. The lighting layer. Uh, the post top fixture in the middle is uh, it's black in finish, but it's meant to be different from the city standard. It's a more contemporary expression of maybe traditional uh, forms. It is doing the uh, the heavy lifting of the area lighting. Those are the uh, orange L's on the site plan. Since we do not have these two buildings, upper right, uh, upper middle in the first phase of development, we've got temporary support poles, as you see in the lower right. That image is uh, from the City Hall Commons, which is between City Hall and 111 North Front, uh, sake of example. Once those buildings are built, we'll then uh, fasten catenary lights, which are over to the left, onto the building itself. This is meant to give a series of ceiling planes to these outdoor rooms. Again, more of a plaza, less of a street. Those are positioned uh, high enough for emergency vehicles and taller trucks to, to pass below. So all of them taken in concert uh, give us that proper light level and a, and a glow to the streetscape. Next slide, Lewis. These are some, some perspective sketches, give you a sense of how that street lays into the mass of the buildings. Daytime view, looking south, um, you can see the patterning of the pavers. You can just barely see the cat air lights. They're meant to be very light and lacy as they cross the street and the random placement of the trees. Next image, please. Same view, nighttime image giving some character to the street as those courtyards and retailers and restaurant tours up and down the street uh, activate the street. We've got a, a sense of place that's looking to be different in, than anything in Columbus and another destination in the city. Next image, please. Street view, uh, looking north towards the office development, Lost you. There you go. You can see the catenary lights very well in there in this image. You can see on the left side of the image the granite bollards that differentiate pedestrian way 
uh, from vehicles, the limited parking, on-street parking, wood-topped benches. So this is very much, very much uh, piazza-like, less street. Next image, please. And then a nighttime view of what that would look like on any glorious summer evening. Lastly, are the gateway elements. Since this, this street is embedded within this uh, high density architecture, we thought it was important to provide some orientation uh, clues and cues to uh, direct people to high water alleys. So you can see the four corner orange gateway created piers that are inboard of the street trees, the street lights, the street signage so that the long views from Bell Street, from Starling Street can attract uh, and naturally provide some orientation for automobiles, for pedestrians, for bicyclists. Next slide, please. You can see these in perspective. Our inspiration were the vertical supports of the uh, rail bridges. That railroad and those bridges are what uh, denote this district from East Franklin Town. We've abstracted that truss architecture. We've put a punched metal scrim on it. They're modestly interiorly illuminated. So they want to have a soft glow to them, but we're not looking to take a light feature out of these. So you can see in this particular example, the stair tower at Doran Green, uh, at Bell Street, these things will be visual cues to draw people's attention to what is a three block embedded street. These are being coordinated with the city, the public utilities, right of way, uh, public service. We, we know that there will be a developer for their installation, their energizing and uh, long term maintenance. And that's. Are there, are there four difference. of those then? There are four of them at two intersections total. This is at uh, State and uh, High Water Alley, and it's also at Rush and High Water Alley. They're companion streets. You'll also note on these, before I forget, there's a 1913 elevation shown on the top of these. That is the high water mark for the 1913 flood that decimated this district. We thought it was important to link this development back to the culture and the history of the place. The catenary lights are also suspended at that same elevation. We think there's a very interesting and rich story to tell about the district and what happened uh, over 100 years ago. We'll tell that story in a little bit more um, meaningful form. But we thought it was important to connect that. Brian, these pylons are, are made of what, steel? Steel, yes. Painted steel of uh, detailing and color, not quite there yet. They're not meant to be domineering, but they are meant to uh, be visual cues to draw people in. Uh, we've got, you know, we also want them to be a signature for High Water Alley. Uh, when you see a continuum of arches in the city of Columbus, you pretty much know you're in the short north. Uh, we're suggesting that this becomes a bit of an orientation device and signature as well. I wonder if you want to. This is, uh, this is Danny. I just want to say that I really like the idea of the, uh, the way that you're telling uh, the story of the flood, I think that's 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 very interesting, exciting, and creative. Thank so, you, Danny. Yes, uh, Brian. I'm I'm wondering if um, you might want to. I think those are kind of neat looking uh, uh, devices there. I'm wondering if you want to put a little light on the outside of them as well. You know, kind of an up light that would just kind of glowed. You know, so it's got a presence almost on the outside as well as being in lit on the interior yeah good point commissioner you you're, you're you're probably right we're to the point now where we need to get down to the detailing of this we've got our lighting consultants looking at this and the other lighting of the district um i think that would be very interesting so you could you could read the uh interior face as well as maybe having some modest internal glow to it as well uh, right we thought the we thought the structure was very interesting to read through that that scrim. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a question about the pylons or a comment about the pylons. I love the idea of 
of what they are. And I love the fact that you're incorporating that back into the history of Franklinton. Uh, first, I was wondering if you had thought of using them right at the entry at Chapel Street as well as, as at Capitol Street. So, you know, to just say, hey, this is the beginning of the, um, you know, of the of the street, of the alley, and this is sort of the end, this is the length of the alley. And my other question was, if you had thought, well, the 1913 is really fantastic, but maybe beefing it up a little bit in terms of how people can see that visually, um, and then maybe using that at one intersection, and then the four other ones at another intersection, possibly um, some other aspect of the of the history. So I'm just saying maybe um, use it as an opportunity to expand the concept and um, you know build on it a little bit more in terms of the alley and the com and the community. You know, all, all good points, Jana. The, the your your last uh, comment first. Uh, yeah, we need we need to better express uh, one the high water mark, but also tell the story, and we'll do that in some uh, creative way. That might be pylon mounted information as part of a graphics package, because there's a lot of history and culture to this uh, to this peninsula to East Franklinton. I believe part of my family was uh, located by that flood, but I won't go into that story. So I, I understand that we need to fully tell that story and we'll advance that further. For the okay. These are some comments. Brian, can you kind of keep it moving here? We want to kind of move this along. Yeah. It's, a great, it's a great proposal. Capitol and Chapel have got uh, the right of way is so tight we cannot get proper pedestrian access along the sidewalks and have those same gateway features at those intersections as well. Karen. Those are first. Thank you. Anything else we need to look at on this then, Brian? Or are you about done? Or That's it, Commission. What's everybody think here? Any questions or comments for Brian? That's awesome. Sure, the group, please. That's what I think, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Yes. Can I hear a motion, please? Can I hear a motion from someone? I need to approve. Yes, thank you. Is there a second, please? Second. Bob, I'll second. Second from uh, uh, maybe Jana was first, or and then uh, Bob. Uh, two seconds. Okay. Any questions or comments? Anything from the audience? Anything else from anybody? Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 As opposed. This looks great. Thank you yes, very much. Does. Thank you, staff and commissioners. Thank you very much. Okay, you, let's Brian. move on to the next case, please. Case application DC 2006 002 375 West State Street, also part of the Saito Peninsula redevelopment. And it's going to be these parcels here going from the West Capitol Street, south of the historic train station, going down to West State Street, uh, and going across the street. It's going to continue down uh, to here. We'll brought this level right here okay um site visit i have some pictures for you so the applicant is proposing a parking garage here's a view looking south you can see the train tracks here here's the spaghetti warehouse uh this is just just next to the old train station looking south, the parking garage will go approximately all the way down here to where you see the concrete from the, uh, the train. If you looking south, here's the southern section of the northern portion of the parking garage. There is this vehicle access point right here, which I believe is going to be blocked off for the proposal. Uh, this isn't right of way, however, this is a private property. The tunnel some of the conditions it's currently in. This is the northern section looking north towards the Spaghetti Warehouse. Here's the connection on State Street with the uh, overpass of the train. This is to the west of the train to show what's on the other side. Uh, next to the Spaghetti Warehouse, there's uh, 
a brick wall and uh, the dog spot. So not, you know, there might be uh, room for a greater connectivity there. This is the view looking on State Street towards downtown. So the parking garage will be on both sides of the street here. The northern lot looking north. And here's the southern parcel where the second building will be going in the conditions. And there's the train station. So I won't read the whole staff report, but uh, I will say the Saida Peninsula parking garage consists of two six level parking structures along Starling Street. The larger north garage will be at 377 West Capitol Street and will have 1,030 stalls approximately. Um, and the smaller south garage will have approximately 374 parking stalls. A skyway will connect the southern parking garage with the residential to the east. And while the streetscapes will be submitted in the future, the applicant is seeking approval of a landscaping plan. Analysis with the guidelines. The guidelines state that parking structures should not dominate the streetscape. Size and massing should be guided by the same principles that apply to other buildings, and the visual impact of their apparent mass should be minimized. The integration of residential and ground floor retail and office uses is encouraged. The exterior design should minimize the monotony of its underlying structure system through wall mass and window openings and through variation in color, material, and or texture. Where parking structures and pedestrian areas are joined, the exterior edge of the parking structure should exhibit a high level of architectural detail. Planning <coughs> acknowledges the necessity of these garages as a vital part of the Sayota Peninsula development. However, staff notes that the proposal does not fully address the above design guidelines. The landscaping portion of the proposal generally meets the guidelines. Pass over the applicant. Okay, uh, who's uh, here to present for the applicant, please? Mr. Chairman, Mark Hours from Mode Architects. I'll be representing this application. Anyone else going to testify today for the applicant? No, sir. Okay. Um, do you uh, swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So say I do. I do. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, Luis, could you put it onto the first slide, please? That's the last slide that you've got up there. Apologize. Thank you. So I think I think Luis did a good job of uh, setting the table for the uh, size of the structures and the location of the structures. I do want to talk about the fact that these garages are going to be city owned and city financed. This project is being developed by Capital South. Uh, in much the same way that they've developed other garages in the downtown area, such as River South, 4th and Elm, and Dorian Green. So, uh, Lewis, if you could go to the next slide, please. Piggybacking off the presentation that you just saw about High Water Alley, I've got some of the same slides for the peninsula development. Uh, again, the, the items highlighted in magenta are phase one. The upper two uh, by the railroad track the sites that are indicated there are the locations for the parking structures. Next slide, please. This shows the proposed building footprints for the phase one development. And again, the, the two uh, rectangles at the top of the screen represent the, the two parking structures, the south structure on the left and the north structure on the right. Next slide, please. This highlights the site location just so that we're all clear on where we're talking about. We're going from Capitol Street and the historic train station down to the edge, uh, southern edge of the phase one development. Next slide, please. This shows the uh, aerial photograph of the existing conditions. So this does encompass Capitol Street, Rush Alley, and State Street as part of our development. And we've got essentially a long garage and a short garage, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Next slide, please. Uh, I think we covered the existing conditions. I think everybody knows that the site is quite narrow and quite long. It's also uh, non-developed. And right now the railroad bridge is really the dominant feature and it's not in the best condition. Um, the bridge that crosses State Street is iconic for the area, but the, the wall itself is, is not the most attractive. Next slide, please. So this represents our, our proposed ground floor plan and the way that we have uh, articulated the garages to work with the context. 
There are no curb cuts along Starling Street, which is the long street at the bottom of the slide. All of the vehicular ingress and egress for the two garages is primarily going to occur at State Street. And you can see where the three trees are at State Street there. You can see the, the ingress and egress points across the street from one another and pushed back towards the gateway to East Franklinton. There is also a secondary ingress and egress point onto Capitol Street up near the historic train station. Next slide, please. So this is our first, oh, oh, thank you. This is our first slide. This is standing in State Street, uh, picking up on the presentation that Brian just made. This is looking west. Uh, his views where you were discussing the pylons with the history and the story making would be immediately behind me in this image. So this is looking towards East Franklinton and this is using both the south and the north parking garage towers to create a gateway element and to highlight the railroad bridge as you enter into East Franklinton. Next slide, please. So this view is stepping closer to the structures. We are now standing on Starling and looking north on Starling and west on State Street towards East Franklinton. And this is giving you more of a view of the north parking structure. The north parking structure, because it is so long, is articulated so that it is broken into two distinct masses. Next slide, please. So this view is standing on Rush Alley, and it is looking at that connection element in the north parking garage that shows how the massing is broken down to make it look like two structures that are put together. You'll notice the two pedestrians standing at the opening there. This is uh, at a pedestrian way. I think Lewis had mentioned that the, the bridge to the Spaghetti Warehouse property, that is going to remain. At this point, we don't know the future plans for the Spaghetti Warehouse property, but we are accommodating in our design a pedestrian throughway. We think that that connectivity could be really valuable in the future. So you will have the ability to establish a future connection to the Spaghetti Warehouse property through this element. And this will also be a point where pedestrians can ingress and egress the garage and make their way across to the high water alley area. Next slide, please. This is standing on Starling Street, looking again at the north parking structure and that connector and the way that it integrates with, with Rush Alley. Next slide, please. This is the elevation set for the north parking structure. Uh, so the garage, as you can see, the very image at the top is the east elevation, which faces Starling Street. That gives you a better sense of where that connector is located in the middle and the way that the towers are articulated on the corners to create gateway elements at the streets. Uh, I think the renderings do a good job of showing you that this building is never really truly viewed in this elevation. You can't really stand back and see this garage straight on. You mainly travel against it by going down Starling Street or going through it at the gateways to East Franklinton. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a slide that I put in to show the articulation for the ground floor level. The elevation enlargement on the left shows you uh, the, the intent for the brick detailing with soldier coursing and recesses and some limestone caps on the piers. We also have an aluminum, an, uh, aluminum uh, faux window system that is going to go into the ground floor level of these garages to simulate storefront. Um, this, the, the sections that are where parking are do not have any glazing in them. The, the light gray stippling that you see reflects a glazed in metal panel to hide headlights and to hide cars. And the precedent image on the right, while not the color of brick that we're proposing here is spot on for the level of texture and brick detailing and soldier coursing that you see in the piers as proposed. Uh, next slide, please. This is the south parking structure. Uh, you'll see there in the image, there's a placeholder for the connector bridge that connects to the apartment development. Um, that, that, that skyway is being done by the apartment development team and is not part of our proposal. Uh, that's why it's shown as a placeholder there. Um, so this is looking north on Starling Street. Next slide, please. Uh, and then same as the north structure, this is the elevation set for the south garage, the uh, Starling Street elevation is the upper left, and then the north elevation there on the upper right is the elevation that faces State Street, and then the other two elevations face the vacant property and the railroad. 
Next slide, please. This is our materials board. So the image on the left is representative of our intent with the brick masonry. We're doing a three color custom blend of. Okay. Apologize, the three tones are showing up right. They're showing up a little bit off color because they're photographs of the bricks, but uh, the image on the left is, is a very good representation of the intent for the mortar color and the tonalness of the three bricks in the blend. The three materials indicated on the bottom, the gray, the darker gray color is for all the metal on the building, the, the faux storefronts, the real storefronts, um, the copings uh, will all be that charcoal gray. And then uh, the structures are all coated in an aluminum batten system that are meant to give the building some texture above the ground plane level. And those battens are aluminum extrusions that are eight inches deep and they have this faux wood driftwood finish which goes nicely with the palette but also gives the battens a little bit of uh, extra texture uh, and then lastly in the lower right there is our, our glass it will be a clear glass with a slight gray tinge to it so that it pulls the palette together uh, next slide. what color are the mortar joints what color are the mortar joints uh, charcoal charcoal gray the, the image on the left there where it shows them being very dark that is the color of the mortar okay got it thanks it specifies Thank charcoal mortar yeah, thank you for the question. So what's the material of the uh, driftwood battens, please, Mark? It's a it's an aluminum extrusion with a with a faux wood finish on it. How do they do that? Is that something that's applied to the aluminum, or is it a paint, or what's what? It's a, it's, a, it's a specialty paint finish. It's a it's a fairly new process. There are more and more aluminum products that have these wood looks. Um, yes. And will it last for a few years? Absolutely, it'll last just as long as any other Kynar finish that you would have on aluminum. It, it will have a very long lifespan. Next slide, please. So this is our landscape plan, and I apologize. The orientation for this is rotated 180 degrees from the other plans that you were looking at. So in this slide, north is to the left. Um, we're, we're quite limited on our site constraints here. Those of you who know parking garages know that uh, to, to do an efficient garage, you need to have at least two full parking bays. These garages are both two bay garages. Uh, and to keep 10 feet away from the railroad bridge, we're very close to the lot line and in all cardinal directions. So essentially, our landscaping plan is, is quite uh, simple. We have some foundation plannings around the north, east, and south uh, faces of the building where we have a very narrow strip of land before we begin the public right of way. And you can see the examples of the plant material we have planned for that. Uh, and then the area that we have that is along the railroad, which is shown on the bottom of this plan, uh, you know, again, that railroad wall is not the most attractive area. Uh, and most of our uh, lower level garage, with the exception of the pedestrian cut through, is closed off. You will not be able to see that wall on the interior of the garage, but we do have uh, some low maintenance. Uh, ground covering plantings and a decorative stone mulch plan for those areas. And then we've also got some small fence elements that we're going to use to close off that property so that we can try to keep um, people from accessing the, that small little strip of land that's going to be left there. Next slide, please. Uh, and so that's the end of our presentation. This is back to our signature view on State Street, and I welcome any questions or comments that the Commission may have. Questions or comments, please. Um, I have a comment. Uh, excuse me. I really like the massing of the parking garages, and I really appreciate the use of the battens, the you know the innovative material to have a driftwood look. My only concern is that I think um, because you have on the north garage on Starling such a large expanse of that, it starts to look a little institutional. And I'm wondering if there's a way that you can break it up a little more. Um, I don't know, maybe introducing something a little different as well, or maybe, put, maybe putting a variation of color or a design on part of it, um, especially when you see it from an angled view, like you spoke about, you would never really see it head on, but you might see something interesting from an angled view. And I don't really know, but I think that perhaps the gray tinge, tint to the glazing might be 
making the gla glass look a little dark. It might just be in the rendering. But I think anything that you with, that you can do to lighten it up and make it look a little bit more inviting um, and less dark and monotone, I think would would be helpful to in, to enliven it. But I think basically it's a very very good design, and I appreciate the things you've done, to, you know, to really be innovative. Thank you for the comments. I, I do think the glass is looking really dark because of the rendering. There's no lighting uh, shown in the back there. And as particularly at the top, those towers are not very deep. There would be sunlight coming through there. Uh, it's not our intent for it to be smoked out so that you can't see. I think that's a product of the, of the rendering and the way that it's put together. Um, with respect to the comment on the battens, and, and Lewis, thanks for putting this image back up. I think this is a good representation. We, we have tried to articulate this as sort of three structures articulated down the street. And I do think the rhythm of each street block will help will help break that down. Um, we've, we're, really, we're really trying to do this batten design in these three locations to help screen the automobiles because we are going to have people's windows on the opposite side of Starling Street looking across to this. Um, I'd love to hear the other commissioners' thoughts on, on the rhythm of them before I respond any more about uh, changing. Well, thank you. Comments? Anyone else from the Mark? Mark, this is Mike Lusk. What's what's the spacing of the battens? In other words, what's the the open area versus the closed area? Yeah, th thank you for that question. Right now, they're about twelve inches center to center. So it's not it's not super dense. The battens are eight inches deep as proposed. What were the Mark? How will the lighting inside the garage? Uh, that seems to be the thing that would most likely annoy people across the street. Yeah, and I, I, I'm sure some of you know that when the energy code got updated at the uh, at the beginning of the year, it's now such that garages have to have leveled lighting so that the lighting levels will be reduced when there's no activity in the garage and then it brightens when a car or someone goes through there. Uh, so there will be two lights per bay. Uh, the lighting will be on those sorts of occupancy sensors and energy reduction methods so that it will not be bright all the time. It'll only be bright during activity levels. So hopefully in the evenings uh, and at night when, when activity slows down, the lighting levels will also dim themselves naturally based on the lighting controls. Uh, I think I also failed to mention that the, the North parking garage is, essential, is, is meant to essentially serve as office users. There's going to be approximately 900 office users in that garage, and it's also going to host the nest space for the hotel valet parking. It will be open to the public and it will allow for transient parking, but it, it will have a kind of main heavy duty use of, uh, of nine to five office users. And in the south parking structure, the one that has the Skyway proposed is principally meant to be for residents, but it will also be available for transient parking. So it is possible that we will get uh, activity and events and maybe even East Franklin's and parkers who want to park there and, and then walk over. Uh, I want to say that I think that pedestrian uh, connection through the middle is uh, really important and a really good idea. Uh, and keeping that uh, tunnel connection as bad a condition as it is uh, to the west. I mean, we have Franklinton's been divided by walls, right? It's got the the river, then it's got the coastal, and then this development is very. Uh, urban and very well connected, but then there's another wall because of the elevated railroad track. So penetrating that wall in the center seems really important to me. And I hope that's going to be well lit and inviting and, you know, kind of connect, uh, have, have people want to go through there and hopefully there's some place to go. Agreed. I, I, you know, we don't know the future of the spaghetti warehouse property and we also don't, obviously we don't have access to that bridge itself. We would love to. We would love to, you know, do the lighting and get that piece in place. I think we're doing the best we can to put the infrastructure in place to allow that in the future at this time. Mark, this is uh, Danny. Uh, just to echo a lot of what um, uh, Bob Leverage just said, because I know it's been maybe three or four years when Ted and I was working on the uh, Franklinton plan. One of the things was one of the biggest concerns was. Um, how we do connect um, Franklinton and just having that tunnel and that pedestrian walkway uh, does provide an in invitation. So it's 
starts to come together as opposed to um, the the um, wall being a barrier. So uh, thank you for that type of consideration because that was one of the bigger concerns that we were looking at. So it wasn't uh, just a, a block or a barrier. So thanks for opening and keeping that opened up. Thank you. Thanks for the comment. Hey, Mark, this is Tony. Considering the uh, the lack of landscaping due to the size of the building, did you guys consider any sort of trellis applications where you could have some kind of vining material to sort of soften the garage down? Yeah, I, we, we did discuss that. I think our concern is that these long facades faced east and the development that is across the street is just as tall. I, I'm, I don't have a high degree of confidence that we could do anything on the east elevation and it would survive. And I'll echo my comment that I don't think, other than being in the buildings, I don't think you truly see those elevations. The only elevations that I think we could do any trellising on would be the south elevations. And it, the south elevations of both structures don't really face anything. I don't think it would be appreciated. Other questions or comments? The pleasure of the group. There is, uh, there was an open question on the massing of the north building. Anybody have a comment on that? I think it's well articulated. Well, it's clearly broken. It's it's broken into two sections. They're they obviously match. They're the same thing. Um, but the the other thing that I keep going back to is, with all due respect, these this these structures are set behind. I mean, the buildings you're going to see are the three buildings along. Um, Correct. What is that, Starling? I'm forgetting here. Yes, correct. Uh, it's the one, the buildings you're going to see are the buildings that are to the east of these structures. With and with all due respect, this is in the in in the back. Um, you know, I've been one of these people that you know, a parking garage is kind of a parking garage, and um, I, I I don't think you need to make a parking garage look like a Georgian house or something like this. And this this really, in a way, is kind of a perfect place to have a parking structure because to the west of it, you got the railroad tracks. Right. Uh, so it, it, it fills a slot. You got a slot left over. And by the way, between this and the, and the park there, the Dorian Commons, you've got a tremendous development going in there. So and with this high water street and everything. So the context kind of works. I, I do like the idea that this is broken into two on the north side. So, um, and I've gone back and forth about thinking about whether, you know, you, you do want to have them maybe look. So instead of one great big mass, which you've in a way you've done, you've, you've, almost, you've almost put three together to make a big mass instead of making three different ones. But at any rate, um, any other questions or comments on that? Okay, I'm was great. Was, wasn't, I beg your pardon? I was going to say the concern with planning wasn't the design so much, just the, the scale of it. I mean, the building is it's almost 700, 700 feet long uh, from north to south. So at that scale, we would have preferred to see the building broken up or have different treatments for each section just to break it up. So why, what's your thought on that? Um, Mark, you've heard a comment on that. You've obviously thought about it. You've heard that. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, I think this was strategically designed to be long one street wall that articulates the gateways. That was that was the original design concept. And, you know, really our focus was creating gateways to East Franklin. That's that's where we've really put our effort in. I think there's already enough diversity in the buildings on the other side of Starling Street that you don't really need the noise of three parking garages with three different designs. Trying to make uh, yeah, I, I think the comment about these being background buildings and this really being the vehicular access road in and out of the development is is spot on. Uh, you know, I think we tried to pick up on the industrial cues of East Franklinton and really focus on connectivity and gateways. And we've tried to downplay the Starlink facade as really just a backdrop. Okay. Um, Are we coming back to us with graphics? How about lighting? Did we look at lighting on this package too, by the way? We we have not looked at lighting and, and, and Bob, thanks for your question. Right now we don't intend to have any graphics on this garage. I mean, the only signs, if you go back to the final landing slide that I had, there are some 
uh, you know, uh, public wayfinding parking circles that are at the main ingress and egress points. Uh, we'd be happy to submit the signage package uh, for you to look at it in detail when it's ready. Uh, but there are there is not intended to be any advertising or, or any sponsorship things on these parking. Lighting on the exterior, Mark. We do intend we do intend to put uh, pilaster lighting up lighting down lighting on particularly the two story sections where the gateways are, uh, much like you would see in the rest of the arena district or the Columbia Gas Building. Can you, like, you bring that back to us then when you put that together, please? I, I would be I would be happy to submit the uh, the lighting package. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments for the applicant? Uh, would someone make a motion, please? Steve, if I may. Um, I'm sorry. Who's who's this, Lewis? This is Christopher Lore. So, Christopher, please go ahead. So Lewis noted one of the comment, uh, one of the comments the staff had an issue or concern with was the length of the one uh, building. The other was that the gateway on state. So if we can go back to that image, and our, I think our feeling was that that it didn't do justice to that entryway, that gateway between East Franklinton and uh, the Sierra Peninsula downtown. So if there are opportunities for public art or alternative treatments on these sides, I think that it would be um, an opportunity for the commission to discuss. Thank you. Okay. I did have one, one comment. Um, Mark, can you see the, the landscaping that you have in front of the garage, especially on Starling? Do you see that as pretty much filling, you know, filling up and um, panels, or at least a certain height of the panels, because I'm wondering a lot of times right at that ground level, we like to see something that's enliven, enlivening and animated, but it looks like you do have a very thoughtful landscape plan. And I'm just wondering if you envision, let's say you have those panels that are in front of the, of the uh, cars you know, down Starling, do you see the landscaping as, you know, being prominent enough, even though it's a thin strip, to really fill that in and um, and soften, you know, and soften them a bit? Yeah, Jana, thank you for the question. Uh, right now, the way the plantings are, are, are conceived, they're really ground covers and foundation plants. They will really be more of a pedestrian experience. They're not intended to climb the wall or, or to grow up. Um, the tree canopy experience and the way that the brick is articulated at the first level, I think, does a good job with the pedestrian experience. And I don't think once the trees are mature that you'll really, you won't really think much about the upper levels. Okay, so they're meant to be just maybe a foot high at most. The what you have. Yeah, yeah, they're meant to be mid, mid calf at the most. Correct. Okay, well, I think that. I mean, I think that's enough. As you know, as long as it's some some height, I. I think to just soften those those panels. Yes, the, the aluminum panels will be covered as somewhat with vegetation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Visual, visually, not physically. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other any other questions or comments? We have a, a uh, we have a, a question here about the State Street connection. There. What What are the thoughts of anyone on that, please? Steve, this is Ted. I, I, um, I appreciate staff's comment on that. And, and as Danny was saying earlier, the connectivity west is really important. Um, at the same time, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with this application. I don't necessarily want to hold it up, but maybe just to plant the seed. If, if Mark, when you guys come back in on, if, if it's lighting or other, if there's anything else you come back for, if there was a consideration of how to integrate some art um along that street level um I, it it would be interesting but again i'm I'm not suggesting from my standpoint to hold up uh approval of this moving forward okay any comments did you, mark did you consider maybe um uh, i don't know something colorful or interesting or uh lit up or something in those two towers that would kind of make this a more exciting Gateway, we we hadn't we hadn't considered that, but I, I think that's uh, it's certainly an interesting thought. I think we were thinking these structures are more background structures, and you know I've I've uh, I'm I'm the architect of the parking structure at River and Rich in East Franklinton, and so I'm I'm a little biased, but I would say that that development was very pro art, and 
I'm visually, I actually think it's a little bit too pro art of those of you who, who know it or have seen it. I think that would be my primary concern of if, if we were to articulate something here, I think we would want to make sure that it was very specific and very tasteful and not a, a program that ended up sort of taking over the garage because I don't think you control it. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you really want to draw attention to these buildings in this development. I mean, this is going to be a signature area for the city. And I think the high water alley area and the, the architecture facing COSI and the riverfronts really where the attention needs to be. But if the commission believes that we should explore the pedestrian areas, we, we can take a second look. I think it's a very good opportunity, especially that gateway, and it can be something subtle and tasteful, but I do think something that enlivens it and draws you to that area and that, they're, okay, there's something beyond that you could engage with, I, I think is important and I, I think it should be looked at. And you're talking about that State Street uh, uh, strip in there on the north side and the south side of the respective buildings. Is that yeah. correct? Yes, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark, you've heard a comment. Is that worth taking a look at? I, I think if it's the commission's desire, I think we would be open to maybe a conditional approval that we that we that we reconsider that when we come back with the lighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's everybody think about that? I think that sounds great. Right. I don't want to slow this down. Right. Let's uh it says so would someone make a motion, please? Bob. Uh, make a motion to approve the garages as submitted uh, with the condition that they come back with lighting, uh, signage, and, uh, uh, and a possible and consideration of some treatment yeah, on, on state yeah, street. Consideration of some art or color or uh, other treatment at that, at that location. Okay. And um, uh, I assume you're um, uh, including the landscaping in the uh, approval then? Yes. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second, Jaina. Thank you, Jaina. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Are there any comment? Are, are any comments, questions from anyone? Anything from the staff? Anybody from the public? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye, please. Aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Can we go on to the next case, please. Oh, God. How many more? <clears throat> next case is DC 2006 518 East Broad Street, the uh, State Auto Insurance Company building at the intersection of Broad and North Washington Avenue. Took some site pictures, this location. So they're proposing signage on a couple elevations. One sign would potentially go here. I believe this is the older portion of the building, a bit more architecturally detailed. There are these recessed rectangles above the windows that I believe the sign will cover on that elevation. There are some details. They kind of match those details in the center extend over to the edge of the building. Here's their, uh, their ground sign that they have, the monument sign. Another sign will go on this elevation here. Get close up there. I believe these are, might be cement panels, or I'm, I'm not sure exactly what this material is, but it isn't as detailed. Here's the front of the building. So let's read the staff report. The applicant is proposing three wall signs at the State Auto Insurance Company building. The signs will be located near the parapet on the south, east, and west elevations, and will measure five feet, three inches high by 29 feet, three inches wide. Panel letter signs will consist of white acrylic faces overlaid with perforated dark bronze vinyl. The returns will be dark bronze with dark bronze trim caps. White faces will appear to be dark bronze during the day and white LED illuminated at night. The guidelines state that signs that identify the name of a building or major tenant should be proportional to building height and mass and be compatible to the building architecture. Illumination is supported. Staff has some concerns about the number of perforations needed to anchor the signs and the west sign would cover some architectural elements. Here's the proposal. 
Okay, who's here to present the uh, case today, please, for the applicant? I am Carolyn Price. Hi, Carolyn. Anyone else with you? Anyone else with you or just you? Um, just me. And I think okay. there's um, a couple other of my associates online, but I'll be doing the main presentation. Is anyone else going to testify then? Not that I know of, no. Okay, then would you raise your right hand, please? You swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If so, say I do. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's go with it. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you for your time this morning. Um, again, like Lewis uh, mentioned, we are looking at adding some exterior building signage, um, illuminated building signage to um, a few of the facades of the state auto insurance company's buildings. Next slide, please. Um, so this just gives you a little bit of a site plan and site location. So what you're looking at, um, so when we look at um, sign A, that is the one that is facing out to Broad Street. Sign B is at the corner of North Washington and Broad, and then sign C is at 11th and Broad Street as well. And just to put it in there, the sign at Washington and Broad, sign labeled B, that one is an optional sign that we'd like to get um, conditional approval on in case the client would like to move forward with installing that sign. Next slide. Um, so these are um, some renderings showcasing what the sign will look like in terms of scale and color as well. So you'll see sign A facing broad, sign location C on the east facade facing north 11th. So as was stated, the, um, in order to keep with some of the air of the building, we chose to do a dark bronze finish that will appear during the day. And then when it is illuminated at night, it will appear white, so it is visible. And then this is the rendering that showcases the um, sign B, the um, corner of Broad and North Washington, which is kind of labeled as optional as well, in case the client does want to move forward with that location. But then also in this view, you can see where sign A is located at this view as well. Are all of these the same size then? They are all exactly the same size, yes. Um, this is just a rendering at night, so you can um, view as it would be viewed at nighttime, where the letters will be illuminated white for visual appearance. Um, here's a series of elevations showcasing um, the location of these. So this is sign location A, which is the south facade facing broad. Um, as you see that it will be um, aligned with the set of windows and then centered in the um, between the upper windows and the top of the roof line. And this is the one facing Broad Street, or I'm sorry, sign location B on North Washington. Again, as you see the um, letters, the signage is uh, aligned with the windows on the right-hand side, and again, centered between the center three windows and the roof line, and some of the cornice detail, trim detail. Carolyn, are there uh, recessed or raised panels above those windows that aren't showing this drawing? Um, as was shown in some of the um, photos that Lewis showed, there are some slight recessed panels. Um, and from my knowledge, it's only, we will be on that corner, so we will be covering those up. With the, illuminated with the raised channel letters. And this is the um, sign location C on 11th on the east facade. Um, and it's just showing where it'll be located on that side of the building, again, aligning with the windows and centered between the upper windows and the roof line. Um, this is from day night sign. So again, this is just showcasing again, um, a couple more of the renderings as well as they did it. And um, what we are proposing again is um, a anodized aluminum that is finished in dark bronze with a dark bronze trim cap um, and then a white acrylic face that has a dark bronze perforated um, vinyl applied to the surface. So it, again, during the day, it'll appear dark bronze as well. At night, it'll be glowing white. And then this is just a little bit more of a detail of how it will be installed. And again, there will be power run to it as well. So they will be flush mount um, channel letters. So flush mounted to the facade of the building. And the five foot dimension is actually the of the 
logo only, really. Yes, it is just the height of the mark. And then you see there's other um, notations for the other letters as well below that, or next to it, I'm sorry. And that's it. Is there any questions? In fact, or how, do the electric, how do you get the uh, how do you get the electric in? Come in through so the ceiling is, inside and yeah, drill, so drill a, through the stonework. Yeah, so that is something we are going to do a site survey on. But there is a fifth floor and it has a um, acoustical ceiling tile. So what we're going to do is most likely pull the power from there and run it out um, through the face of the building. So each layer has to be a penetration to the stone? Shown here, yes. You'll see um, where the um, crosses are is going to be a penetration through the stone to um, have it mounted into the wall. This is shown as individual channel letters without a raceway behind them. But how about the electric then? So but do you, do you drill, does electric current go to each single letter and each piece of the logo? Um, there's no raceway. There's no raceway. Carolyn, I can answer that question if you can hear me. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, we need to swear I, I'm sorry. When you were trying to swear me in, I, I couldn't figure out how to unmute. <laughs> Forgive me. Jennifer, are My you name is Jennifer you? Bender. I'm with. Please go ahead. No, you're with. Day Night Sign Company. Okay, great. Are you, would you be the only one in addition to Carolyn to uh, testify? That's correct. Okay, would you raise your right hand? You swear in a firm video? I do not. Well, okay. just tell we us. But my right hand, hand is raised. <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Do you swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Thank you. Okay, there was a question you were going to tell us about. Jennifer, thank you. That's correct. Each letter has three points where it would attach to the building. One of those points would go all the way through and the electric would string together behind the wall from letter to letter. So each letter has three or so attachment points and then one of those would go all the way through the electric will go from letter to letter from the one hole that goes all the way through okay so will there be conduit behind the conduit wall? would be On unnecessary uh led lighting is a very low voltage lighting the wire itself is ul rated to it, it doesn't require conduit uh, it would be the, the holes themselves would be caulked as they go, and uh, UL doesn't require conduit. There would be uh, if if electric is required to be extended to the area, then there would be a conduit that carries the primary electric to the sign area that ends in a J box, and the electrical connections within the letters would then attach to that J box. Okay. I think this is kind of a horrible thing to do to a limestone building. Uh, what happens when state auto becomes Incova or, you know, changes their name? Um, that is where we are hoping state auto with their longevity and that they will be um, celebrating their, I think their hundred the year that they will be around for a very long time. So um, in the case that the light signage will need to change, um, Jennifer, you can correct me, but these holes in diameter are not very large and can be filled in. And they will probably not be we have one meeting visible from the street level. Doing a new meeting after you leave the previous meeting. That, that is correct, Carolyn. They would be filled in. We would do our best to match the color of the limestone um, that, so that it would be fairly indistinguishable from the street five stories up. How big are the holes? What's the diameter of the holes? Uh, no larger than a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch, huh? Okay. What's the uh, pleasure of the group? Any other question? Anything, for, anything else the applicant wants to tell us about? 
No other comments from myself. What, questions or the, comments from any of the commissioners, please? What's the basis for the uh, optional one? I, I, I'm perfectly comfortable with the, I think it's A and C. I'm not as comfortable with the one that faces West. And you said that was optional. Why, why would we approve something that's optional? Um, that was just a um, comment from the client that they um, are having that as optional. I think um, really the primary locations are going to be A and C off of Broad and 11th and not off Washington. I just want to get that approval, um, conditional approval in case the our client state auto would like to move forward with that location. I, I would agree with driving. Bob, but I'm a bit uncomfortable with uh, B. Okay, if someone wants to I will to make point it. out that driving west on on Broad Street, as you as you drive west towards State Auto, it that B that sign B is very visible. I went to check it out myself. I thought that the art museum and the trees may obscure the sign view, but it does not from the street. If you drive east? Yeah. If you're driving Sorry, east, that's yeah. correct. Right. Driving east, that's the west facing sign. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion if someone wants to do so. I had a, um, I had a comment. Should I wait until after the motion? No, if you have a comment. Okay, um, two things. I like the fact that you're using something that is dark bronze during the day, but I wonder if it's just a little bit too dark and could be slightly lightened up because it seems to be um, in, a, in you know, real contrast with the building. And I'm thinking something that's still bronze, but maybe a, a shade lighter or gradation lighter might just somehow you know, you could still see it very well, but might blend a little better and um, not, you know, not seem as stark. And the other question I had is, tell me why you prefer putting each letter, you know, directly into the stonework as opposed to using a raceway and minimizing or, you know, or something in the back and minimizing the amount of um, penetrations into the building. Do you feel you get a cleaner look? You know, is there a particular reason why you would offer this? Yeah, so um, for the bronze and some of the renderings, I will say that the bronze tends to probably look a little darker than it is going to look. Um, it is a dark bronze, not an extra dark bronze. So it's gonna be definitely not black. It's not gonna be quite brown. So I think it will actually have a really beautiful appearance of a more of a bronze and probably, like I said, I think the renderings are showing it probably a little darker and that was just so, to visually represent um, how it's going to look and so it'd be easy to see for our clients. Um, in terms of the raceway, um, sometimes I, I feel raceways sometimes have a hard time matching the color of the building and tend to be noticed a little more than, um, than I, I know I personally aesthetically would like. Um, so that is where I think it is a cleaner look having letters applied directly to the face. Um, as well, and the historical part of the building, they do have individual letters that are applied directly to the face. So I think it complements that look as well. Okay. And the, the insurance companies underneath, that would also be individually applied. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. And you wouldn't think of eliminating the insurance companies on the bottom and just for the signage, just have state order auto. I, I'm sorry, did you... Just on those on those two signs or those three signs that are on the rooftop, would you consider just using state auto and not having insurance companies underneath it? Um, we discussed that. However, this is um, at the pleasure of the client, and this is their official logo. And this is, um, I think, this is the correct way to represent their logo on a, their face of their building. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for the applicant? Any comments from anyone else? Uh, could I have a motion from someone, please? Motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Danny, second. Okay. 
There is a motion on the floor. Now, questions or comments? We have an option to do whatever we choose to do here. Uh, if not, I'm going to ask for a vote. Any other comments from anybody? Bob, Mike, Otto? Yeah, yeah I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to suggest that we not approve location B. I agree. I amend the motion to exclude location B. Can, can I ask um, the commission's uh, opinions on? I I guess I don't mind. It seems like the the thing that bothers me about B is if it was smaller and fit into the panel that's on the building, I'd be comfortable with that. But I don't know what was on Mike your your mind or others' minds in their reluctance on sign B. You know, I, I think it's it's hard to tell exactly what those recessed panels are, but they're part of the architecture. And I just, uh, you know, and it's not, I just have concerns with uh, what that does to that facade. Yeah, right. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think our guidelines say we don't cover up architectural features. With me, they still have the option to come back if they want to act again or if they want to manipulate it, especially since it's kind of an optional thing. And this right. started on A and C. Right. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to, what, what's everybody, I'm going to break the log game here. What's everybody want to do? Uh, Jan, are you willing to amend your uh, motion? Yes. I, and I apologize. Danny? I thought we were just approving A and C, so I apologize. Um, yes, approve the um, design with A and C, but not B. And then, is the second and the line is is the second uh, okay with that? Yes. Uh, okay. So we got a motion to approve A and C, um, and a mo uh, on the floor. Any questions? Any other comments from anybody? Applic anybody? Favor say aye. 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 Okay. That motion carries, um, Carolyn uh, and Jennifer, to approve A and C. Great. Thank you. Come back, guys. Thank you. Um, you're obviously welcome to do so. And we can talk more. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Thank, you let's get on to the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is this our last case, by the way, Lewis? Yes. 21 East State 20 Street. 206015. 21 East State Street. They came before the commission last month for a conceptual review. This is the uh, location, the third center building at the intersection of West State and uh, on High Street. Let's, let's kind of give some of the background. I think sure. we know where we are and jump right into the yeah. building. Thank so, you. So, um, like I said, they're returning. The guidelines are pretty much the same. Uh, the commission's original analysis was that the modifications felt like an add-on that did not respect the architecture of the original building. The applicant has made modifications to their design based off of the commission's input. The proposal incorporates more of the art deco elements and architectural details of the existing building. Landscaping and streetscape improvements generally meet the guidelines. Okay, who's here to testify for the applicants, please? Uh, CJ Scheibel with, with uh, Valstone Partners. Okay. Will you be the only, um, uh, will you be the only um, person to um, present then today? C I'm sorry, is it CJ? Yes, CJ. And I believe Dan Ayers is on the line yeah. as well. we'll this is Dan Ayers with MBBJ. And I believe that Colin is also from the landscape is going to present uh, today. So there'll be three of us. Okay. Would you folks, uh, is who is the other fellow from the uh, landscape? Colin. Are you Colin. on? Yes, I am. Uh, Colin Mavis. Okay, great. Would uh, you three then raise your right hands? Do you swear in a firm testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say I do. I do. I do. Okay, very good. And you've got that, Lewis. Thank you very much. Here, would you do this for us since we just went through this uh, last, whatever it was, meeting? 
you to concentrate today on what changes you made since our last meeting in response to some of the comments you heard. Could you do that, please? Yeah, we were going to just have C, uh, C, uh, CJ do a little bit of an introduction from the client's uh, side on what their goals are for the project, uh, and then we can jump right into uh, going through the landscape um, and then the architecture really quick. So we'll we'll stay yeah. focused. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. First off, I want to just thank the commission for their time and consideration. Um, quick background on on Valstone. Um, Founded in 1998, a real estate private equity firm. Um, we're institutionally capitalized, typically um, seek distressed opportunities um, that we can add hands on value to, um, you know, which is where Fifth Third Center comes into play. Um, part of the non performing loan on this, on this building in late 2018, um, took title shortly thereafter. Um, building had and, and still has a significant vacancy. Um, you know, it's no secret secret that it's um you know struggled over the better part of the last decade um you know and our strategy really is to invest you know significant dollars into building improvements and and ultimately stabilize the asset through lease up um you know with the angle being to to differentiate the building from its peer, peers and and um you know allow for it to, to better compete for the higher end of the, the market's class a tenancy um you know the, the improvements being discussed today are all components of that strategy um, you know, the aesthetic improvements to the building entry significantly, um, you know, improve the initial curb appeal of the building at, at first entry. Um, the, the redesign of the exterior retail storefront um, gives, gives the asset a kind of a fresh and, and modern, but, but also tasteful image, um, you know, while also improving high street visibility, um, allowing for outdoor seating. Um, and again, the streetscape, streetscape improvements also aid in that same goal of of uh, enhancing curb appeal of the property as well. Um, so yeah, from there I'll let I'll let uh, Dan dive into the the design detail. But um, again, just want to thank the commission for their time and uh, consideration um, relative to the project. Yeah, and I'll let Colin hit the landscape real quick. I know the last time we presented uh, the the streetscape improvements, uh, which I think there's some subtle adjustments that we want to make sure you're aware of. But uh, we're overall well received uh, and needed, I think, for the overall project. So, Colin, if you want to uh, quickly go through uh, where the landscape is at. Yeah. Thank you, Dan, and um, thank you, Commission. Um, just the landscape is pretty much um, basically in concept the same as you saw last time. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, we did receive the comment of um, looking to try and increase the number of state, uh, street trees along State Street. Um, due to subsurface utilities, the planters that need to go there, the entry, um, and also um, trying to allow for some future outdoor seating. Um, there's really limited space for trees. And actually, as we began to look at the subsurface utilities, we ended up having to remove one of the planters. So um, the existing location is, is pretty much the only place where tree roots can uh, get through and meet soil and have an, a healthy existence. So. Um, we're trying to give it the largest plant possible, uh, but otherwise the plantings are going to be um, the um, planters that are there today and um, replaced uh, to align with the building entry. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. Any other, uh, so basically that's your only change, remove one of the planters, right? Uh, yes, uh, we've shown the renderings um, and with the fine, stone fine. rendering, but other, otherwise, um, that's the main change. Okay. Are, are you assuming a, a restaurant at location nine in that drawing that flashed by a minute ago, where you've got outdoor a little bit of outdoor seating at the point where it seems like the most congestion at the, the corner by the state house? Uh, is there enough? I guess I'm just asking: Is there enough room there with the planter and the fence and the seating for uh, the bus stop and, and the pedestrians you anticipate having there? It's not the ideal location. Um, what it ended up being is that is pretty much the remaining location that's available for retail tenants. And so we're um, at this moment, the, the plan is to not install the railing until there is a, a restaurant or dining tenant in the space. Um, we're just leaving the option open that if in the future, um, they would like to see some outdoor seating. 
um, there could be a railing there. There is enough room based on the guidelines um, and it is clear of the bus stop and clear of the doorway, but it, it's tight. It's cozy. So it to the, the, there's the dimensions for that too. Sorry. Code of putting a bus stop uh, shelter there. Not that's currently planned. No, not to my knowledge. Thank you. I mean, do you. If you wanted to do an additional amount of seating, I mean, do you think about taking out that planter on the right up next to the corner there? I mean, Bob's got an interesting point about that. That, and by the way, if there were seating there, I mean, that would be, you know, that in itself gives some uh, liveliness to the uh, location. You know, I was just trying to. You guys have a a, a high street perspective that I think shows it. Uh, fairly well and actually makes me more comfortable that you do have a comfortable amount of room for the pedestrian. Yep. If you scroll down a couple of sheets to our cut sections right there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. One back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's seven, almost eight feet. Yeah, it's a pretty wide sidewalk currently along with the, uh, you know, currently there's some planters there, but it's pretty wide open. Um, I think it's something we scale. The fence could even be a little bit closer to the building. I, I think it's fine. Okay. For all Great. the question. Okay. I'm gonna. I. We don't have to uh, jump around. Is everybody all set with the landscaping? Yes. Okay. I'll just show you where we've uh, what we heard from the from the uh, commission last time. Um, if you go to the next page, I'll I'll give you a sense of what. The original Beggs building um, was like for the lower region of um, this is on State Street uh, and uh, below, which is some of the modifications that we've made to the entry. Uh, key change to the main entry uh, is the main columns coming down from the tower. We previously were changing those to a metal clad uh, column coming down. We've left those as the limestone comes down. Yes, that's the pre perfect. Nice, nicely done. Yep. So, uh, you can see trying to 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 keep some of that historic nature coming down, uh, while still providing an updated entryway uh, into the into the lobby, uh, which will be also renovating. So, uh, the rest of uh, State Street again. Uh, the, this is currently shown without the landscape, uh, so there are no trees currently shown in this to show all the architecture. Uh, this. Uh, it, uh, replaced, uh, we'll be replacing all the windows with an aluminum, uh, a new, uh, storefront system and aluminum panels for, uh, the dark, uh, gray areas that you see infilled there. Um, if we go around, let's step around to high street. Uh, same thing. What we've looked at here is looked at the overall elevation. Uh, you can see the repetition of the columns, which actually does not work, uh, real well from a retail standpoint. So yes, uh, Lewis, if you can jump to the, mm -hmm. uh, the previous. Um, yeah, let's see. So we previously had looked at going all the way across as far as we could uh, along High Street and recessed and pushed the retail back uh, to create some space uh, for the retail outside. Uh, also uh, recladding the columns that come down to grade a much larger intervention. Uh, the current design, uh, we've reduced the overall impact on High Street, but trying to take advantage of providing a retail uh, face that is uh, works for retailers, creates the visibility and the connectivity of the inside and the outside. Um, and this is also a metal panel. It rendered out a little bit uh, warm in this uh, view. It should be a darker gray, uh, same as State Street. So um, if you go to the next slide, I think is the core. I I was I said I didn't really like what you had before. I think this is a actually is a solution for this thing. I think it kind of brings the building all the way down instead of kind of chopping it off the way it was before. Mm -hmm. uh, and for my personally, I I just feel better about this. So perfect. That's, we we actually yep. Sorry, go Bob. Apologies. I think it's a lot better. Uh, and I just want to. I think you just said this, but the spandrel panel or whatever that is, the aluminum panel, it's the same color on both sides, right? Yeah. Go to the last okay. perspective. Uh, it's probably the best way. Uh, if you go to the last page, second to last page, uh, shows both uh, from a from a perspective of both sides. And I'll come back to the materials real quick. Oh, what happened to that? perspective go back up on there we go so this you can start to see that dark metal panel on both high street and state street 
uh, seeing the two sides. So, so one, the one thing that we did add at the entry by bringing, keeping the columns as the limestone, we did add small canopies above to designate that as an entry. Uh, it allows us to provide some uh, you know, potential small lighting that comes down to light that area, but it just is a nice uh, understanding of where the entry is, where even in the previous uh, perspective uh, wasn't as noticeable from the street. So this gives you an overall view of it. And if you step back through the renderings, uh, you'll start to see the, um, the views down. This is on high street uh, with the building facade and then now looking. So we're seeing, so we're seeing stuff that looks like copper paneling. That's not what you're proposing then, right? It's more, it's more of a dark gray, which they're here, the color. And you can actually see why we put all these different photos in here is with the metallic finish, it does change with different light to it, which gives us a nice effect. So it will catch catch light at different and have different coloration, but the basic is a uh, is a is a dark gray um, uh, for the overall project. I, um, I think that the um, high street elevation that you've revised is very successful. I worry about still the um, state street it seems that those those return walls that are in the dark gray, at least in the rendering, they look very dark and almost cavernous. And I'm wondering in reality if if it isn't going to be that way. Because when I look at it now, you know, I appreciate that you have the columns and you're keeping that rhythm and the um, you know original structure. But I wonder when you have that head-on view looking into it, if it really will look that dark. Or um, if it's you know not this view, but the one where it's head on. The head on, I think the the glass is rendering out as almost black, so it almost looks very. And I agree with you, is very very dark. I think this view is a better representation of the of being able to see into the lobby space, uh, and perhaps that depth where it's not as as dark. The other piece of this is the signage uh, we're continuing to work on, which will be on those uh, potentially on those side walls or on the band in the middle. Which will continue to lighten it up, uh, but I believe uh, it's it still will be um, a, a warm and inviting entry, which will be drawing your eye into that interior space uh, and not onto those walls. And do you feel? I mean, because I have mixed feelings about this. I like the fact that you're articulating those three bays with the canopy, and you know, in that way, kind of you're making it seem like okay, this is one larger opening. But I just. And I like the fact that it is sleek and it is flat, but in another way, I feel like you're obstructing the, the original arch. And I'm wondering how you feel about that, if you feel that maybe they were slightly dropped down, um, or maybe if the material were translucent or something where you might be able to see the arch from, you know, from beneath. I don't, I'm just wondering how you feel about that, the fact that with these um, really rectilinear canopies, you are obstructing the original arch. Yeah, so we're keying a little bit off of the, and you can see it just down the street a little ways, the other entryway has a flat arch to, or doesn't have an arch, it's flat. So we're tying some of the entries back to, the arches are at, at, the, at the retail points, the entries are flat. Um, trans, uh, we did actually try lowering them down to see how that would start to look from a scale at, at a pedestrian side. And then it, it, it gets into an, uh, an odd uh, kind of location. So we like the simplicity of them, uh, not trying to mimic uh, too much of, of uh, what's going on, but still designate that entry. Uh, so I think it, it ties in a, the lighting elements that it can be provided on it will, will uh, create that sense of entry and the logos with it. So uh, it's something we could look at for sure, um, but uh, we, we did look at some other options with that. And are you, it looks like from the original, you are taking away the, those large pieces that look like uplights that were originally on the building. Is that yeah, correct? You, uh, no, those, those will be staying. Um, okay. Yeah, there, there's, there's no uh, reason to take them off right now. They just have, or have not been shown up in our, in our rendering. Uh, apologize for that. Okay. The arch is still there, right? The arch is still over the. The canopy, right? Yes. Uh, if you go back to the main, uh, the previous, yes, the arches are still, the arches will remain. We won't be taking those out. Um, 
Are you going to well, have any, speaking of lighting, will you have any uh, lighting that you're going to add or, or delete? In other words, if if you are, we need to approve that and you can come back. Yeah, I think we'll come back with the signage and lighting and and be able to show you exactly how that works. Uh, we can also look at the at potentially bringing those down to if you are far enough up on high street and seeing it, we might be able to, to make sure you we could still see those arches at the top, uh, but we can bring that back. Uh, I as, think that would be a very good. Yeah, I do too. Even if you could lower it a foot or two, you might see that arch, which actually might be interesting along there without, you know, you don't necessarily even have to come down five feet or something. I don't know. Think Correct. about it. We'll, we'll take a look. Mm -hmm. Okay. What can you, uh, let's go ahead and finish up here with what you've got and you're asking for. And then let's see if any commissioners have thoughts, questions. Anything else, Dan, from your standpoint? No, I think the, the key thing is just looking to keep the, the project going, um, as CJ said, to, uh, to help uh, uh, continue with the, the interior uh, renovations and others that we're looking at just getting started. Are there any questions or comments from the commission, please? I think it's much improved. I think it's terrific. Uh, that building needs a facelift, and uh, I think this uh, they've listened to our comments, and uh, I think it looks great. I, I would move approval. Of the design is submitted with. Uh, uh, the applicant coming back with lighting and graphics and giving consideration to moving those canopies down a slight amount to emphasize the arch. Okay. Is there a second to this? No second. Okay. Are there Mike any was. other questions? Thank you, Mike. Any other questions or comments? Anything? Christopher? Those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commission. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Lewis, do we have any other cases? No, that's it. We just need to uh, approve the certificates of approval issued by staff. Question, Lewis, what's the lot split? The lot split is at the JC building at 266 East Main Street. Um, I'll pull it up. I need to get off for another call, so I'm going to sign up. We're not going to vote on anything else. Uh, I'm going to okay. exit the meeting. Thanks, Thank Mike. You everybody Thanks for my help. Another long meeting. So they they are they split the lot, um, pretty much right down the middle. I know they have future plans for the site. I'm not sure, but they did a lot split. What building? Franklin University. It's housing, isn't it? Uh, oh, JC Tower. JC Arts or JC Tower? Yeah. How, what do you mean they split the lot? Oh, I'll show you. Let me pull it up here. Through the middle of the building, or to the not through the building. Uh, Split the parking from the building, maybe. At Cherry Street. That's what they were doing. Let me pull it up. Oh, here's the COA. Right there. So they broke it up. Lot splits on the property. Oh, it is into three parcels. Two. No, three. Three. Yeah. Three. Oh, uh-huh. What are they gonna do with that lot just for fun? We don't know yet. They just came in for the lot split at this point in time. Okay. Seems like the lot split should have been uh aligned with Cherry Street, but Hopefully, some indication of um, coming back with something a little more urban, maybe at least on the surface parking lots. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Disposal parcel. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to know what it was. Thank you. Sure, no problem.
Check. Any other questions for Lewis? Um, everybody, thank you very much. Oh, can we just have a vote on that real quick? On what? To approve the step to, to enter into the okay. formal record. Can you make a, um, uh, someone make a motion then, Bob, Mike, to approve the, um, um, the um, staff approvals? I move to approve the staff issued certificates of appropriateness. I'll second. Ted. Ted. Yes, Ted. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Is there any other business? That's it. Okay. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks very Good. much for your time. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.